And could it be Joe Alt is the question that we're going to be talking about for the next 21 days. Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I am Joe Hogg. As Joe Alt did visit the Titans yesterday, that became official, as it is he is part of his pre-draft visits. The Titans can do 30 of those that are outside of the area. Now, no word yet on who else is going to be coming in, but we'll let you know more on 104.5 The Zone. Stephon Diggs officially passed his physical just a little while ago and his deal is now done and he is a Houston Texans a lot of coaches are coming to the SEC it's not often one leaves the SEC but USC is expected to hire Arkansas basketball coach Eric Musselman as their next head coach after going to two elite eights and a sweet 16 with the Razorbacks. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols. The flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home 23HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL 1045 the zone of Nashville. Brent Doherty with you on a beautiful day in the Music City. Hope you're doing well. Happy Thursday. Weekend is almost here. We got you. Don Davenport's here. Hi. What up, party people? <laughs> party people in the house. Happy Thursday. Brendan Haywood coming up at 345, former Carolina Tar Heel. Blech. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Buddy. I know. He played two Final Fours. Uh, also what? did. Um, he stole our final four. I know. Believe me, I know. And believe you, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least he wasn't a football player. Right. Uh, but went to uh, the Hall of Fame. He did the Alabama games the first two. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, first two rounds. And so uh, he'll talk about the final four. He'll talk about that big man matchup. And I can't wait to hear you and him talking about that. Uh, yeah. Because, listen, man, uh, Tracy Wilson <laughs> knocked it out yesterday yes, on that matchup. And, uh, Appreciate her coming on. If you missed that, you can uh, always catch back up with us and all the shows where you get your podcast. Download the 3HL podcast, rate, review, subscribe. And Ron Slay is here. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Getting closer. By Monday, my voice is going to be all the way back. You want the Arkansas job? You know, (laughs) I would pass. We were just talking about (laughs) that. I I mean, what a weird season down there. And you could tell. We talked about it all year. You could tell Musselman wasn't himself. Yep. Like, he usually is, like, fiery on the sideline and jumping yep. around and dancing. Looks like he's got, like, bees all up in his shirt mm-hmm. and stuff. And he wasn't that this year. No, man. man. There was plenty of times he sat back on the bench with his arms claw- crossed and just shook his head like. Just kind of well, watching. These, these folks just ain't listening to me. Yeah. Somebody let me out of here. <laughs> like, you got eight more games left, bro. Isn't it wild to think about where we are with Arkansas's basketball program where a coach would leave for USC? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're talking about rich tradition. And the USC coach left for SMU. So that's yeah, that's yeah. even crazier. That's what we're talking about. Yep. You know? But I guess Although there's a they're lot of money to, at SMU and they're and making they get to the ACC. ACC. There it is. Yep. So that's it's still wild, man. It is still wild. I, I don't understand. You know, with them going the rich tradition they got going to Elite Eight back to back and sweet sixteen. Like they they were winning. This was their first down year. And a lot of people would take this year. Mm-hmm. You can watch the show live, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. The f and Bake Chat is open. Scoop writes what's happening in 3HL family. What up, We've got dude? a lot to get to. Greg Cosell will be on at 420, as he is every Thursday. And what we're going to do today is talk about edge rushers. Okay. I like that. That came up yesterday. Like, how deep is that position? Should you just go ahead and take Dallas Turner at seven? Ooh. I will say this. Like, I've said forever. That was an ant. Without moving my mouth. That was a. That was a. There you go. That was a manual buzzer. Yeah. That was going to hit. Yeah. 
Mm. That sounded more like a hockey goal halfway, <laughs> also wrong buzzer sound. <laughs> that was the excuse me horn right there. <laughs> Oh, that is, what is that? That was annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Joe's about to get an email about how his mic's up too loud. <laughs> <laughs> about my mic being too yeah. loud? Yeah, usually. T- so they teach you to back up if you do something crazy like that on the radio. I learned it later. Oh. <laughs> you learned it without even being told. You dude. learned it two weeks it. ago. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Man. Oh, um, he still hasn't learned it. <laughs> but, I mean, every draft we've said, man, the Titans need a defensive playmaker. <laughs> we We have. But last year, they actually had the only NFL team with two guys with double-digit sack totals. Now, one left. And you always go sign one that's usually supposed to make that splash. You look at Bud Dupree. He was supposed to make that splash. Arden Key was supposed to make that splash. Landry just got hurt. You think they get more out of Arden Key in year two? Um, I For his career, yes. Because, I mean, he's going to want one more back. Exactly. I I, you got to. He's too young. Yeah. Like, you got to go be able to go get it. He's too rangy of a player not to be able to be effective. Also coming up today at 520, Big Savagery, Ramon Foster. Titans topics, fall basketball. You know, I, we never got his take on Alt. I do remember that he did not agree with Greg Cosell's mm-hmm. uh, evaluation of Joe Alt. So we'll be get that from mm-hmm. Big Savagery. So um, Buck, Buck and Lucas were talking about um, the passion of college athletic fans yeah. of college sports yeah. compared with the NFL. And not that the NFL fan bases aren't passionate. We know that they are. Um, but they were talking about that, especially down here. Like, I mean, just, you know, the, the yeah, more passionate. Yeah, Dix. Different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we should probably that. replay that cut and see if anybody wants to comment on that. We can play that all year. Can, you, fi- can you find that while I'm talking about this? Hunk, so, uh, oh, the producer of 3HL is Joe Hunk. Sup. Sup. On top of that, Rose. <laughs> Good job, Hunk. So, um... You should save that. Her saying, good job, hunk. That doesn't right. happen very often. It happens once a year. Dude, are you okay? You got the Barry White just, voice going. I just went deep on that one. No, yeah. I'm good. I just, for some reason, that's the, that's the tone that came out. <laughs> we just went back to high school. Mm-hmm. Slay's got nerds. I love these things. <laughs> are they real nerds? Oh, or my they God. Live? No, these are amazing ones. <laughs> Where did you find those? Um, On my road trip back from Detroit. They're still selling those things. Mm-hmm. Nerds, really now and laters. Like when I was at Hume Fog, there was this there was this uh, uh, convenience store next door called Agner's. Mm-hmm. It's like a furniture store now or something on the corner up there at Broadway. Yeah, and we would all go in there after school because we all rode the metro bus home. Like they don't have school buses at Hume Fog, so it didn't matter if you left like right after school or thirty right. minutes later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bus like, is going to run. My mom wasn't going to be home anyway, you right. know. So uh, we would go over there and hang out. And I would get I was thinking about this the other day because we always talk about the old school stuff like. Uh, jungle juice and mm-hmm. stuff. Tahitian treat. Did you ever get that? Cold blooded. Oh my gosh, that's what Cold we would blooded. get at Agner's. What? Cold blooded. Nerds and Tahitian treat. Man, ooh, that's a mixture right there. Like bunch, pop rocks in your mouth. Whole bunch of taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they were talking about like there's just like it's just more intense. Like for college fans and yeah. stuff like that. And so I texted him. This is this is how Buck rolls. I texted him 11:34 this morning. I said nobody went to the University of Tennessee Titans, and he just wrote me back. It said, thank Christ. <laughs> I don't even Six know. hours later. I don't even know what that means. Buck. <laughs> Buck, 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 his phone will be on Do Not Disturb for so long. Check Babsy out. I don't know what Babsy's doing over there. <laughs> exactly. Put one of those phone. glass things on that y'all told me I had to get. Yeah, there's no chance she gets this right. It's going to be good. There's going to be bubbles. Do you got the little the scraper thing? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's going to be bubbles no, if you don't do it right. your phone. Babs is not dead. I already wiped my phone, but this has crap on it. How, oh, how is this it's not going to work. It's, it's not. I told her to go to the store. Let them do it. It's, put it on now. Let Ian do it. Go go talk to Ian. ID. Ian would tell me where to shove it if I went to him and was or like, will you put my gr- glass protector on? And he'd be like, really? <laughs> Sean on YouTube tried dipping a sucker in nerds. James oh. says Pop Rocks, legit. Vandy Man mm. AD, too. Tahitian Treats were great. I don't, I've never seen those anymore. They so, uh, Savage ordered some one time, I think. Did he? Yeah. James says sweet as fish and orange slices. Sean says Babs has got this, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we hope. David said put honey on it. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking <laughs> about. Hey, so, uh, Greg, another thing we're going to hit on with Greg Cosell, I saw this on Twitter. He did another show somewhere, 
and he was talking about Stephon Diggs. And he said, I'm really interested to see how they use him because he's more of a short to intermediate route guy now. Yeah. And that he, honk, you need me? No, I was just laying down. That was time to go to break. <laughs> no, it's not. We got three minutes. <laughs> see, honk hits just us. Just slow your roll, honk. Honk hits us early. No, because you got to warm us up, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's like the guy that goes out on the stage with the cane and he's like slow rolling it for a second. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? <laughs> um. Uh, Stephon Diggs. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, shallow to intermediate route guy now. He said he thinks he's the number three receiver in Houston, which is really interesting. He's definitely at least the number two. Yeah. Right. Like, I, that surprised yeah. me when I read that. So, I'm anxious to ask him about that, about Stephon Diggs, because, man, that went all over the place yesterday. Mm-hmm. Right. Like this huge move. And then you came up with the stats that uh, LeJerry Sneed has played him five games. Yeah. Ten, ten targets, only three receptions. Yeah. 37 yards, no touchdowns. I wonder when, when that happens, how much help when playing Buffalo is over the top. Uh, that's a good question. I, just locking away? Man, that's one thing about LeJerry Sneed's uh, comments the other day. Like, I, I I'm pretty no sure help. he's telling people, hey, y'all need hey, no help. Y'all go, go to some help. Go help over there. <laughs> yeah, I got this. Yeah, no. <laughs> Leave me alone, dog. <laughs> Fourth round draft pick. I like that. Isn't that crazy? All right, uh, more 3HL when we come back. Uh, we'll talk more Titans football. And, um, yeah, I want to play that cut from, from Bo Nix. If you missed this, he's talking about how basically – Football is too intense in the South. It's really interesting. Next, 3HL, 1045 The Zone. Want to tell you about my friends at Brentwood Jewelry. Don said Twitch, please, uh, by the way. 7012 Church Street, located in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Check out these guys for any of your gifting responsibilities, and you have lots of opportunities throughout the course of the year. They do have new hours in 2024. I want to remind you of that every so often. Uh, They are open back up on Mondays. Monday through Friday, 9 until 6. Saturdays, 9 to 4. Always a click away at BrentwoodJewelry.com. Uh, proposal season, perhaps for you. Brentwood Jewelry here to help you pop the question. Let them help you take the stress out of selecting the perfect engagement ring. They can help you find a beautiful ring in your ideal budget. Browse their incredible selection of one-of-a-kind rings or talk with their custom design specialists to create a stunning ring as remarkable as your loved one. They have an incredible watch selection, including pre-owned Rolexes. So you can check that, uh, uh, those out online as well. BrentwoodJewelry.com. Maybe you have a family heirloom that's precious to you and you need to get that transformed into something that you can wear every day. That is their specialty. Customized pieces at Brentwood Jewelry. 7012 Church Street in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Exceptional style, exceptional deals every day for more than 50 years. Visit BrentwoodJewelry.com. New windows and doors in your home. Do you need it? Is it time? Is your home old? Do you have bugs crawling through cracks? That's what uh, happened to me because my original builder did a terrible job of putting in windows. Uh, So I called Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. And maybe you're in the same position. And it's not really, uh, you know, a sexy update that you can't wait to do. But I'll tell you, it makes a big difference. And uh, you might be surprised to learn how affordable replacement windows are from Pella Windows indoors of Nashville. Homeowners rated Pella as the leading window brand in Nashville. Also number one for innovation and the most trusted window brand. All of those based on a 2022 survey of leading window brands among homeowners. And I can attest that my new windows and doors in my rental property are awesome. they got a deal going on. If you go to their website, tell them Dawn sent you, you get 50% off qualifying installations and no money down, no interest, no payments for 12 months. Schedule that free consultation with Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. Check out that special offer. Just go online at PellaNashville.com.
Three, tell one zero four five the zone. Buck was talking about how uh, all over the board your bump music is. I love it. It's all over the board as far as decades are concerned. <laughs> Majority no, of the time, he t- was hating. Yeah, they hate on me a lot for my music, which says something. Because if you listen to Buck's music, it's god awful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, his choice of music is horrific. Well, Outside of Paramore, that's they're pretty awesome. Yeah, they're from here, and from Franklin. She is nice, Haley. Yes, she is uh, very, very talented. She's like four feet tall, and amazing. And, and can I mean just, just pipes belt it. Yeah, um, yeah. They were playing Gwen Stefani, and and he bitched about that. And I'm like, dude, Gwen Stefani is awesome. Yeah, majority of that's the thing is majority of the music that I have in here all come from the same genre. It's all either hip hop or rap. If there's something crazy in here, it's because I did it for like a bit with you guys or something like along those lines. Sometimes I throw in country for Don. So we will I'm ask um, Greg Cosell about edge rushers, but we'll also ask about Stefan Diggs because I saw, again, a clip on the internet where he said that he, he's interested to see how they use him, that he might be wide receiver number three. Yeah. Um, Tank Dell, Nico Collins are the other two. and, and I him. mean, Nico is one. Uh, so Adam Schefter, uh, put out just a few minutes ago, actually more about the Texans wiping out the final three seasons on Diggs deal, allowing him to become a free agent next off season, guaranteeing, guaranteeing him more money this season. So do you look at that move as like the Texans are all in, they think this is their year to make a run for it? I do. I yeah, they've, they've got rookie deals with C.J. Stroud wanna, and Will right. Anderson. Yeah, And maybe so. you don't want to be tied to Diggs in case he is the locker room cancer that people are yeah. worried about. You're giving him a second chance. Especially if he's a number three receiver, you think that guy's going to be okay with that? I don't. Listening Do to think- it, I thought about what you were saying yesterday. Like, it's it's Mm-mm. it's a pro- like, And it depends on... Is off the field, does it meet on the field, and does it clash? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it looks like he works his butt off. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like some, every now and then, well, not every now and then, like every two weeks he'll have an outburst. You're like, where did that come from? Like Because he wasn't getting enough targets you know what I'm saying? in so his mind. Now you're in a room full of guys that, that can get targets as well. What are you going to do? In you the might article. get three. In the article, it says, with the contract adjustment, the Texans now anticipate to get the best version of Diggs so that he can position himself for a better and bigger long-term make, deal. Now, that's smart mm-hmm. because then you kind of take out the locker room diva aspect right. of it. But I, I'm curious, I mean, what's going to happen, though, when he's not getting, you know, a ton of targets because yeah. he is a number right. three yeah. or even a number two. I mean, you think he's going to be quiet, especially in – a contract, you know, year where he's going to be a free agent after that? No, he's going to be like, throw me the damn ball. They better be I got to make my bag next again. They better be winning. If they're winning, that's the only the thing only that thing will make them okay yep. because you could possibly get a Super Bowl, yep. right? Yep, that would be the saving grace and all of that, not to have any outbursts, pointing fingers. And then a, a guy like C.J. Stroud, man, you don't want to taint what he has going on as far as his growth. You he know was I mean? incredible. Dude, that was it. Our, our buddy uh, Sean Pendergast does radio in Houston. He said he owns that town. It's not close. Yeah. Yeah. I can't Like Astros wait. winning World mm-hmm. Series. Uh, the Texans has a thing. He's like, C.J. Stroud is the rock star mm-hmm. of rock stars. In, well, because when's the last time they had – I mean, it was Deshaun before yeah. Deshaun, yeah. right? I, I'm anxious to see C.J. Stroud. And he owned about, that town when mm-hmm. he was – there yes he certainly did um i i'm anxious to see like what what the growth is for cj stroud does the league like kind of figure him out as, on some level like mm-hmm. what's what's the adjustment to the adjustment that kind of thing he certainly has weapons um and now they've got joe mixon at running back too mm-hmm. so houston made a strong a play uh, er, i mean everybody in the afc south did except for i mean indy just signed their own guys but All right um, that's important too. Jacksonville just leaned on what they have, mm-hmm. which they got pieces already in a sense. Yep. I I think I think this whole Stefan Diggs is a high risk, high reward, maybe. Maybe. E- Definitely a high risk move though. Yeah. 
but you're hedging your bet with you're going to have to behave because otherwise that'll be a third stop where you're a problem. I wonder what the right? camaraderie is like in the room before him getting there. I think that would be a... See, and I don't, tell, I don't tell, know. Yeah, I don't, we don't know. None of us know. Like, we, we got to get... what yeah, Sean Pendergrass? Is that what you're yeah. Saying? We yeah, got to get him we'll on. Like, maybe, him. Yeah, maybe he would know. So... Because that's going to be important. I'm going to write that down. That's third. actually... <laughs> like, we'll just guessed it up on the air. That's actually a good idea to put Sean on. <laughs> yeah. Talk about the moves that they've made. Because they made some. Like, you can walk in there and disturb that entire room and have everybody looking at you with the side. I'm like, hey, man, come on, coach. Why y'all bring him in here, man? Y'all already see how he acting. Mm-hmm. Y'all give it a chance. Give it a chance. And then by week three, it ain't working. Hey, man, we told you, man. Look, everything was cool. And you bring... You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, there's plus, other people behind him that want them minutes. Plus, they took Danico Autry and uh, Aziz Alshar. Yes. 615-737-1045. Johnny the Poet has something for you, Slay. Johnny, what up? <laughs> hey, guys, actually headed down south towards your way uh, for a ball game. I'm going to be closer to you. It's for some reason just makes life feel better. Um, listen, Slay, I, I know I usually call with a bit or a poem or whatever, but listen, I wanted to address – uh, how you showed the passion for Tennessee volunteer basketball last week. It did not come across as an over-the-top radio bit. It truly felt like a legitimate, passionate fanatic of his basketball team, so much to the point where I watched that game, my bracket was busted, I was yelling at the screen, I wanted that big tree, Edie, to get a foul called on him, Connect was brilliant. But, man, your passion for your team – was so much fun. It's what sports is all about, and it's why guys like me listen to radio shows like yours. And, man, I just want to thank you for having passion for your team, and I'm sorry about your team losing, um, but what you're doing is great, and the poet appreciates you, brother. Appreciate that, man. I, I, I appreciate you, that, poet. brother. I hope it wouldn't come o- come it's off giant. as over the top. And if it did come off as over the top, just know it's real. You, yeah, I was going to say, just cut me open. Say, it's going to pour out. I think out. it might have been <laughs> like, over the top yeah, at times, but dude, it's not fake. <laughs> you have no earthly idea, like, to jump on. I jumped on the air with Buck um, and then jumped on the air with, with, with 3HL, what I show. Hey, man, when I say full of it and excited, <laughs> like, I, that was raw, like, I was in the midst of it, like, oh man, let me hurry and go call. Hold on, y'all. Hey, give me one shot. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's like, it like, dude, it was. Hey, man, that was a fun time, dog. I've never been a part of none of that. Never been a part of any of that. That was amazing to be able to follow the team. You always do it when you go to your, like, you going to Auburn, us going to Tennessee. You know, what I'm saying the tailgating at home, but to go at a neutral site and it's like, you know, what I mean, you walking down the street. Hey, man. Forget um, Purdue. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. They forget the balls, but not in those terms. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was pretty dope. Well, I mean, people don't think about it in those terms. Like, uh, it was wild for me to hear that Ramon had not been to a Tennessee game. Yeah. Like, as a fan. Yep. Because he went straight from there to the NFL. Crazy. And, like, I mean, you don't get it's, hard, time, it's hard to do it. So, y'all y'all live it up, though. Fandom is real. And I love it. <laughs> Six one five seven three seven one four five. We should come up with a poem for Johnny the Poet. I have one next time. All right. Sounds good. Straight off the dome. Uh, Jason and Franklin next up. Jason, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Yep. Love the show. Uh, Long time listener. Uh, Ron, love you. Love your stuff, man. Uh, I just wanted to touch on Rick Barnes um, over the weekend. Uh, I don't know why Adu uh, did not play the second half. Um, and when he did, he was in there sparingly. Uh, I didn't watch every single clip of the game. But um, I just wanted to touch the base on that. Why, do, why wasn't Adu in there in the second half? And when you see uh, Zagai Ziegler, um, you know, one for nine, one for eight from three-point line, he had three wide open threes in the first half, and um, when when you're not making those shots, you have to find a different you know ultimatum rather than Dalton Connect shooting 31 shots. Uh, why didn't why was there not adjustments in the second half on on that? And second point is it's two part question. Sorry, uh, on the Calvin Ridley thing and the Stephon Diggs thing. 
unless unless John McClain is saying that Stephon Diggs is going to be a third wide receiver, there's no freaking way <laughs> that guy is agreeing to terms on any certain thing. Like, that guy is the number one wide receiver. Tank Dell tore his ACL. He'll be the number one wide receiver for sure until Tank Dell gets back. Um, uh, well, Nico Diggs Collins is, is really that good. Number one. Mm-hmm. He is, but, I mean, how long did it take him <laughs> – how long did it take him to progress and, and be a number one wide receiver? Well, Stephon I know, Diggs but where are we there. now, though? That's, you know, I, I, I get yeah, what I you're get, saying for I sure. And, and it's that that's why it struck me. And that's why I'm going to ask him at 420 about that. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll see. Hang around um, and we'll hit on the basketball thing. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Appreciate Thank you, you Jason. Um, you want to hit a do first? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think, man, sometimes, though, you, you run up. And I I try to explain this like there's nothing to prepare you for those bright lights and the leaps and bounds that he made to be an all conference center, a second team guy, I thought was great. You when you talk about bigs in the league, man, Tolu Smith and Janai Broom and then Jonas Adu. Walking up against Edie, man, you have to have a mentality. And the mentality that we saw that J.P. Estrella had and that we also saw that Tobey Walker most definitely had in the entire tournament is what you must have. That's his demeanor. It's kind of second tier. Um, I'll wait and see. You know, I'll counter punch instead of punching first type of game that he brings to it. And you could see him actually, and it happens to a lot of people, like, I've had one incident – well, I didn't melt down like that, but I had um, one spot where a guy was getting the best of me, and I didn't want to relinquish it. I didn't – like, I was telling Coach Smith, I got him. Shane Schilling, I'll never forget. We were in Minnesota playing at the Target Center. And the at whole Oak first Hill half – Yeah, Oak yeah. Hill Academy in high school. Grand stage, and he was working. I think he had, like, 15 to 16 at the half, and Coach Smith was like, I'm going to give you one more chance. He came out, did a backdoor cut, got an and one dunk, not on me, but me reaching. And we called a timeout and it was like, Cliff Hawkins, who ended up going to Kentucky, you got him. I was like, no, coach, I got him. He said, man, he got 17. We're going to lose <laughs> if I don't take you off of him. And I'm like, man, come on, coach. But, you know what I mean, my mentality, I wanted to get him, but I couldn't. So, um, a dude, you could see when he was coming out of the game, man, when he missed those first four shots, came out the game, you could see it in his eyes. He wanted to be there. He, it was nothing he could do. That just wasn't his time, man. So I thought coming out in the second half, I, I honestly would have played him sparingly, but I, you had to go with a walk in AP Estrella, man. You just you just got to make that decision. I know that's the guy that helped carry you there, but – and then also the crowd getting on them. Like every time something happens, uh, the crowd, oh, come on. Like – that a, the man's yeah, a human. Yeah, yeah, you can see it melting down, you know what I mean, instead of the encouragement. Plus, it was 85-15, you know what I mean? So, you got the Purdue crowd already against you. Then 85%. The 15% yeah. of the Tennessee crowd going against you. It's like, what the heck? Well, and you know better than almost, I mean, almost anyone, like the mentality of these dudes. You've yeah. been around them. So, yep. like, it's interesting to hear you say that, being in the building and kind of like, Wait a yeah. minute. Like, I know how that's going to affect that guy. Yeah. Y'all I was, need to chill. I was saying to, like, I know I can't say it to the whole crowd, but the people that were looking like, hey, y'all be cool. Like, we're going to need him. Yeah. And it was so it was still balling and it, went, it was too going too so far. My interesting thing here, uh, just looking forward with uh, Adu, is like, I mean, this is a life lesson. Like, you were just right. talking about what you did with your moment. What does he do with that moment? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And do you use that to drive you? Are you competitive enough to use that to drive you all off season? Yep. And we walked away from it, and you ask yourself, like you said, how, how is he going to step up? But the thing the thing is, when you have a guy like Adu, we talked about it leading up to this tournament, Coach Barnes getting on him in practice and him having no response. And Coach Barnes saying to him, like, hey, man, you're not – you're not." Uh, it was on the podcast. They were doing – the players. And they were asking him, man, that was a funny day in practice. He was like, man, he didn't give me – I didn't give him no response. So he was just like – he kept getting on me. And after so long, he was just like, okay, Jonas. But that's his mentality. Anybody else would have – Coach Barnes was looking for him to fire back like, man, I got this, man. You know what I'm saying? And that fire wasn't there. It's inside. It just – You got to find out. Yeah. It's tough. Can't be taught either. No, nah, it, it ain't. You see what Tobey did? <laughs> like he was chomping at the bits to get a piece of the big fella. Mm. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's different mentalities, man. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. So Bo Nix, um, 
play quarterback at Auburn, grew up, his dad played there, grew up uh, an Auburn fan, played at Auburn, and then transferred. And so he had an interesting ride at Auburn. He was known as like home Bo Nix and road Bo Nix, and, and his numbers were drastically different home and away, mm-hmm. um, which I think when you hear this soundbite, that now makes sense. Because when he's at home and he's got everybody behind him, he plays a certain kind of way. When he's on the road and everybody's against him, he plays a certain kind of way, which now makes sense when you hear this cut. But this is a guy, listen, I love the honesty and I love to hear what he thinks. I think it's interesting um, because you don't really think about football in these terms necessarily. At least I don't. But you're trying to get a job in the NFL. And these guys are looking for cold-blooded killers. Bo Nix talking about the difference in football in the South and football in the Pacific Northwest. This is interesting. In a sense, the hostility and the maybe the unhealthy pressure that is added to, you know, 18 to 22 year olds by, you know, outside um, noise and fans, like it's almost like a, a unhealthy obsession in the South. I mean, I, I, I was that way growing up. I thought it was, you know, life or death football. And you move out here and, you know, you play the game as hard as you can and, and you got great passion for the game. And, you know, it's just a little bit more laid back in, in a way. And it's it's a lot more like, you know, we're proud of the person, the, the person you are out there on the field. And like, if you give a great effort and if you try really hard and, and and you know obviously we're out there to win no nobody goes out there to lose and look bad um in front of a bunch of people but i think that's the difference um quite frankly is the what is put into college football in the south and then you know how out here football is just a game and you know we we find the joy in it you know what man mm. is some people and this is the era we grew up in everybody um, and it continues to through movies. I related to movies like The Program and um, Any Given Sunday. Yeah, you know I can relate it to Devil Wears Prada, believe it or not, which was on last night. And I watched it. <laughs> okay, that's your favorite. No, no, no I'm, 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 I want to hear Brent. I want to hear Brent. <laughs> <laughs> no, that slate, 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 you can stop. Support. I want to hear Brent. I want to see how you connect this. So Meryl Streep is running this uh, runway magazine, right? And, like, she's this hardcore, like, really famous, doesn't take any crap kind of person, right? And so, like, Anne Hathaway knows nothing about fashion but gets the job because, you know, she's smart and she's different than people that have come through there. And it's a so really good movie. It's, a, it's an incredible it. movie. It's a, a, a real, like, and I'll get to the point. Yeah. Um, so she was given a task to do by uh Meryl Streep and and she did her best and and couldn't do do the task couldn't get it done or whatever it was an impossible task yeah and she goes in and she complains to Stan- Stanley uh Tucci who's great in the movie but uh she complains to him and she's like i try so hard and when i do things i don't like she doesn't even acknowledge it but when i mess up all i hear is like you know angst and and mm-hmm. stuff and he goes listen she's got a job to do you know, you want to come in here and go through life like trying hard and and expecting a pat on the back. That's not how this life works. And he was talking about their competitive situation. Mm-hmm. And so I, I can relate that to what Bo Nix is saying there. Like, that is the comp- most competitive world possible. They ain't worried about you trying hard. No. And so they're all process people, but at the end of the day, you have to have results. Right. Same in our business. Yeah. I totally, I, I totally agree. Can you you got to get results. Like, yeah, I mean, my I was that good. That, that, that was good. It, yes, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Like my my my, my was right there somewhere around that. Door. She ended up learning how to be a competitive person, and th- look, it doesn't matter if you've got this obstacle over here. Get the job done. Yeah, and I think some people walk away from films like that though, and they say, "Man, you know what? Them, them people crazy, man. Look how look how hard they want to go." And then you got some that say, "Hell yeah, hey man, put me in right there. Put me in that position." That's that's what it is in the South. Like it's, it's when you leave the field, the sports don't stop. <laughs> it, go, it carries in the locker room. It's talked about in the shower. When you get to the dinner table, it's talked about. When you go to sleep, you dream about it. When you wake up, you say a prayer, and then you get on your knees and start doing <laughs> abs and all of this stuff because you're ready to go to the gym and get back to. It's a life, and it ain't for everybody. Yeah. You know well, it's what like mean? here's what about Marcus Mariota? We all love Marcus Mariota, but it came down to he wouldn't. What, what did we always say? He wouldn't push it down the field, or mm-hmm. he, he, wouldn't wouldn't let rip. Rip. he wouldn't mm-hmm. let it rip. He wouldn't let it rip. So then you got to move on from it. Right. It has nothing to do with like liking you. 
No. No. It's, this I'm worried is, about bonakes with that stuff. I I I, I'm, I think I'm, it comes off soft. That, that's there you go. It depends what S-A-W-F-T, you want. S A W F T soft. Exactly. It, it depends what you want. What you want leading your program? Now, I, I'm not I'm saying he can't have success. I'm just saying it's going to have to be tailored to him. General manager is going to hear that soundbite and be like, "Dude, it's going to have to be tailored." Yeah, yo, you man, leave football right here. Get away from it, man. Get it. Go home, man. Be with your, be with your family. Instead of what we're hearing about Will Levis, Will Levis, they can't kick him out of the out of the complex. I mean, Brian Callahan got the job, and <laughs> no, Levis saying. was there. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Working out. Give me that. That's what we need down here. That's what we need down here in the South. I'm cool with it. I oh. unhealthy obsession. That's probably true, but um, <laughs> we, <laughs> right? I mean, it's probably true, dude. Everybody that comes from the West Coast, I related to quarterbacks. Come from the West Coast and they get into an SEC program. The first thing they say is, "Man, look how laid back he is, sunshine kid." Casey Clawson, prime example. Yes. That's how. That's how it is. That's that's how it is. Looks like nothing phases him. It's the same thing with Nico. It looks like that with Nico, but you know who Nico is. I but he looks cool and calm. I also remember talking with Kevin Burnett um, when he got there. Maybe Kevin Simon. Uh, anyway, they came from California, yep. and they were like, "This is a whole different thing, man." That was my roommate, and they were like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah. So they're like, "In L.A., nobody even knows a football game's happening." Nope, it's everything here. Yes, absolutely. So it ain't it ain't for everybody. Maybe maybe it, it wore on them growing up, and he wanted to see something else. I'm like torn at my reaction to it a right. little bit. I love. I would love. You to want that it. after the yes, break? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. All right, we'll talk more about this later and bring it oh. up uh, a little bit later. Brendan Haywood's going to hop on courtesy of Bet Online, and we'll talk about the men's and women's Final Four um, and uh, get his take on that big man matchup. He was a big man for North Carolina. We'll do that next. Three HL one zero four five. This zone. What's happening, good people? Listen, Code Generators, we're coming straight to you. Who we got with us, Babs? We got Generator Dave. He knows everything it is to know about generators. He's the expert in generators. You know who teams he's on? Code Generators. That's all they do. Free new seven-year warranty will have purchased of a Generac home standby generator from now. I'm talking about right now through May 12th. That's $735 value. That's almost $800, people. Only through May 12th, though. You yeah, got to get on it, Babs. Guess what? What? We're going to give you more of a deal. Oh, come on. Talk to the people, baby. $500 yeah. off only if you mention Slay, Dawn, 3HL, yeah. 1045. Uh, they want to know that you heard about them through us, and so they'll give you an extra 500 bucks off for that. So you can say goodbye to power outages forever. Uh, maybe you just don't want to deal with it with the storms. Maybe you're a prepper. Maybe... Um, you just want to make sure all your food doesn't go bad when mm-hmm. the power goes out because you know it's coming. I mean, we lose power at least a couple times a year. Everybody in Middle Tennessee. Cove Generators, your premier Generac home standby generator dealer. Call them today. Covegenerators.com at 931-559-3311. And stay connected through it all.
Three Hotel 1045 The Zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay with you. Yes, sir. Final four coming up this weekend. Slay, you fired up about that? I am hyped and excited about the final four. People are overlooking it. You know what I mean? Talking about our game like we ain't right here. Final four is still here, baby. Final four is still here. And uh, Brendan Haywood uh, played in two of them. Um, joins us now, former Tar Heel. Uh, thanks to Bet Online. Check out Bet Online for the most up to date men's and women's games, uh, game lines, and unique prop bets for the Final Four. Brendan, what's up? How are you, man? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me, fellas. Um, what does it feel like to play in the Final Four? <laughs> man, it's an incredible, it's an incredible feeling, man. Like you, you go in there, man. You're playing in one of these incredibly big stadiums. The energy when the team makes a run, you can just feel it. The whole building is loud. Like it's Playing in the Final Four is great. Even though I haven't won a championship, I lost in two Final Fours. But this, the atmosphere, I'm glad I got the experience, even though I didn't get the ring. Man, I tell you what. Hey, what it must be <laughs> it must be a hell of a conversation to have with your teammates, man, knowing that you made it to the Final Four. And you you put us out of the final, the opportunity <laughs> to go to the Final Four. I'll never forget it in Austin, He's Texas. He's not bitter, though. No, <laughs> me and Ed Coda, go behind, we go back and forth on it over and over on social media, man. But tip the cap to you guys, dog. I do want to talk about, man, like how, do you, how you're judged as a big and how you're officiated. You had that go on and I, I think even in our matchup playing against you guys you fouled out and I, I ain't gonna get it verbatim right you know what I mean but um, I think you picked up like two offensive fouls and a hot, lot of it was just carving out space when you look at a guy like Zach Eady and the way he's officiated it's not like that as far as it's being in the tournament as far as him picking up fouls especially from carving out space and things of that nature how difficult is it for officials to to uh, uh, to referee it and for players to defend it? Uh, it's super hard for guys to um, stop Zach Eady simply because the game is different. It's right. not, it's less hand, it's less hand to hand combat. It was more physical back in 2000. Ah, you know absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and so you know how some of that is. So if a guy's getting physical with me, I might want to get physical and carve out some space. Yeah. And now I've, I've gone overboard. Now I pick up an offensive foul. Like you talked about, I did in the game against you guys, mm -hmm. whereas Zach Eady, he does a very smart job. When he ducks in, he ducks in big, but he's never throwing an elbow or a shoulder. He's just carving out that space. And everybody for Purdue, it's almost like they got the memo. Like, listen, fam, if you don't got a wide open J, you pump that thing into the big fellow, you coming out the game. Yeah. Because as soon as they run a pick and roll action on one side, he ducks in, that ball mm -hmm. gets swung, and it's right into Zach yep. D. And the defenders don't even have a chance to try to play high side or low mm -hmm. side. They get stuck behind him. Mm -hmm. Once you get stuck behind him, he's going to get to that jump hook or he's going to he gonna foul out your whole front line. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> he did it to Tennessee. That's right. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> 14 fouls on three people. I did, even though you guys won that, that um, and I'm going to leave it alone because it's, it's a wound that's open. Um, every time I talk to a Carolina player, I ended up playing For those with, that don't know, yeah. North Carolina beat Tennessee in the Sweet 16. Yeah, thanks for reminding me, right? Yeah, well. um, yeah um, <laughs> but I did. I'm producer. I, 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 you you want to know one thing, you didn't know? I'm so glad we won that game. <laughs> and not just because we won it, and not because we, we, for the right to go to the Sweet 16. You yeah. know why? Why? You want to know, he's probably a great guy. And I, he probably is a great guy, but I tell you what, I couldn't stand Tony Harris. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something about Slay talking. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't really know. I mean, Slay was Slay was yapping, but I didn't know Slay. Yeah, I was a freshman. I was a freshman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tony, I, I just I just knew, hey man, Youngin can play, yeah, and he's going to talk to you. But Tony Harris was a McDonald's All American yep. my year, and he was so. He used to joke me all the time at the McDonald's All American game. I was real heavy then, and he had the most joke. I couldn't. I hated dude. Yeah. I was so glad that he was one for ten. I still remember his stat line. I, he was one for ten, and we beat y'all. I was so glad. I would. I would. I didn't want Tony Harris to have no life. That's right. None of it. I would listen to me. Man, when we went back and talked about that game, we said all the time it's two factors that I thought that would have helped us win that game. One. If Tony Harris wouldn't have um, – if he would have made some shots and got his average, just his average. He didn't have to go bananas, just get his average. And two, I felt like if you never fouled out, they would have just continued pumping the ball <laughs> into you. And we just would we just would have had to go back and forth, back and forth. But then they put the ball in Ed Coda's hands, man, and he just went bananas, dog. And him and Forte wouldn't lose, so – 
it was different. But our producer did pull out stats from that game, man. Just I think. Uh, yes, yeah, Slay finished the game with uh, twelve points. You finished it with eleven. Oh, <laughs> Slay. <laughs> or, no, but and then Brandy, you had five total rebounds in the game. Slay had seven, but. <laughs> Haywood did have four blocks. I, 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 he brought a block going to mind in the stands. Just, Him and Julius Peppers. Absolutely. Like, you know. <laughs> absolutely. But you were right about you were right about Harris because Harris was one for ten in the game. I'm telling you. You remember that. Wow. You don't forget I these moments. I, 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 it was one of those things Tony Harris had no idea how much I disliked him. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he used to want to do is <laughs> joke on people, too. I, yes. I yeah. had, he had no idea how much I disliked him. I don't think I said he's probably a great guy. Yeah. That's my experience, I couldn't stand him. That was when we were like 18 years old. Right, right. I, I still remember. I love these stories, man. I know. Brenda Haywood with us. Uh, thanks to the bet online. Um, and uh, you, you, you kind of mentioned the uh, the ED part of that. How does how does that whole matchup with DJ Burns and ED work itself out? Because they're different players, and they may not even – guard each other uh, I think that um, it's going to be domination by Edie he's been dominating people all year long and I know B- DJ Burns is a great story he's had an incredible run um, he plays with touch poise passion the footwork I love it but man he ain't seen seven four he ain't seen like you you can't replicate that no. in practice. it's like oh it's like yeah they've been sh- bigger guys that have tried to bump Edie out the lane Edie's used to that but Burns, when he tries to go for that up and under, and he sees it seven four, it kind of it <laughs> takes me back to like early in my basketball career, where like I'll be making moves against Yao Ming, and normally I'd get it off, and I'd be like, "Man, this dude's still here." Yeah. Like, I, he, <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. I couldn't even see the basket over Yao. Like, no lie, I couldn't even see the basket sometimes when I would jump to shoot my jump hook over Yao Ming. It's like I would jump in the air, I'm like yes, I hope I can get around his head to locate the basket <laughs> at some point. Yeah. But that is what Burns is going to have to go through because you're not used to playing somebody that size. And then Zach Eady does a great job of carving out space, playing to his strength. He's going to jump hook you to death. He's going to go to the free throw line. He's going to knock his free throws down at a high clip. Mm-hmm. And NC State, in my opinion, is in trouble. Because of Zach Eady, and then the last part of that is the fact that they've been letting their last couple of opponents shoot wide open threes, yep. and Purdue ain't the team to let them take those type of shots. Sure. Marquette wasn't knocking down shots. Duke wasn't knocking down shots. Purdue will knock those shots down if they give them to them. Man, great stuff, Haywood. Uh, hey, th- thanks for popping on, man. We need to do this again. Get, get a little more story time with you. <laughs> oh, man, no doubt, no doubt, man. Good catching up, brother. Appreciate you, guys, appreciate you guys having me. Slay, wish you the best, man. Man, and you too, bro. Hey, but not Tony Harris. I still don't know. Slay <laughs> <Hello, man. I> <laughs> so was talking about having him on not too long from now. So yeah. thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, all right, Brendan Haywood. Uh, courtesy of Bet Online. Check out Bet Online for the most up to date men's and women's game lines and unique prop bets for the Final Four. Uh, when we come back, we'll get to Babs's point on that Bo Nix clip about football being more important in the South than it is in the Pacific Northwest, and he preferred it. <laughs> In the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> 3 hl 1045 The Zone. Twitch, please. Uh, you know, a lot of people have hair loss and a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but uh, maybe you've tried everything and hair loss is still something that you are suffering with. And that's both men and women affected by hair loss. Well, you need to call HPI Hair Partners or go visit them in Maryland Farms or online at HPIHairPartners.com. Yeah, a lot of guys get uh, worried about or, you know, anything dealing with their hair. It's, it's, it's a lot of things contribute stress, uh, anxiety, um, illness. All of these things contribute to it. It's not your fault. Uh, and then a lot of guys put things off. It's easy, man. Uh, all you have to do is go to the website, hpipartners.com, and set up your, your consultation. It's just 45 minutes. I went with Dawn's husband, Travis, and it, it it was great. It was interesting, and they will find follicles to love on. Yes, and uh, I just had my first scalp session yes. yesterday because what they did is they looked and saw that uh, my hair follicles were not producing as much hair in the front as they were in the back. That's where all my hair 
hair loss was after I had a baby and COVID. And so I had my first session yesterday and it was amazing, basically stimulating those follicles. So I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. But I uh, also did a hair follicle test where they can tell me where I'm deficient in certain nutrients I need, which is, if you guys know me, that's right up my alley. These people are the pros and it works. It's amazing. HBI Hair Partners is who you need to go see. HBIHairPartners.com or call them at 615-662-8722. Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hunt. Got rival Houston Texans have done a few things to Stephon Diggs' contract. He just passed the physical a couple of hours ago, making the deal official, and he is now a Houston Texan. But in the new deal, he it has wiped out the final three years of his contract, meaning that he will be a free agent after the 2024 season. The Texans also took the $3.5 million that he was guaranteed for next season 
and they moved it up to this upcoming season, meaning that Stephon Diggs will get $22.52 million in 2024. And the Nashville Preds have seven games remaining. Three of those are going to be at home, and one is tonight against the St. Louis Blues. The puck drops at 7 p.m., but remember, you can only watch this by watch, by having a Hulu account where you can watch it there. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the ball is a flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home two three hl this is 1045 the zone three hl 1045 the zone hope you're having a great thursday motoring on toward the weekend final four coming up you okay over there no man (laughs) okay I'm, Wait, I this. love that actually because like you come across people all day and you're like, "Hey, how you doing?" And everybody's like, "I'm great, man." Even though they're not, you know, they're not. I like it's. I ask you, man. You okay over there? No, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sick of this portal, man. Oh, you're talking I about Bronny James? Ask like, how close are you watching the portal? Because it is active. Yeah, it's active. Yep. I saw Bronny. Another one in. See, that situation is different. Their coach left. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, but he was talking about doing it anyway. Right. I mean, and that's weird to me anyway. But yeah, Haley Van Lith has entered the transfer again. Board. Like, like what? Do you, what you chasing? Okay, she she plays guard for LSU. LSU. She, she was, came from Louisville, playing right. in the Final Four for Louisville. What you like? What what you? All right, this, this, Boy, so. she did not play well against Iowa. No, she was there. There you go, one for ten, I think. Yeah, and get torched. Then Freddie DeLeon jumped into the I was going to say DeLeon. That's that's understandable, though, because the, he's a point guard. He doesn't shoot well enough to play the two. And you know Z is coming back. You didn't get minutes this year because of Zakai. Like, what you Zakai plays 39-40 yeah, exactly. minutes. So. That's what it is. Yeah. So. And you know he's back. Well. Freddie DeLeon going to be a good player for somebody, though. Well, you think he's back. <gasps> no, you I I know. I'm just saying. Uh, Zakai Ziegler, Zakai Ziegler ain't going nowhere. No, he's Listen. definitely not. Not Vol- with uh, not with uh, his, how Vol Nation yeah, takes yeah, care he's, of him. Yeah, he's embedded in. What the, was that? Three hundred fifty-three thousand dollars, something yeah. like yeah. that. And they had to cut a it house. Off. Yeah, they, a house. They had to cut it off. <laughs> and and like now his family's in Knoxville. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he ain't going Charmaine. anywhere. Charmaine. Shout out to his mom. They did um they did a good piece on that. CBS did. 615-737-1045 is the number. Don Davenport is here, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. What about? I'm in the building. She is in the building. Oh, 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 oh. Executive producer of 3 is Joe Hart. What's up? Ron Slay is here. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. I'm glad you can building. get there now. I'm in the building. It's close. I'm in the building. Well, that was Monday. I'll be back. That's I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Bourbon last night. Oh, my gosh. What'd I, you have? I don't even know the name. Uh-oh. It's, ooh, you worked yourself stuff. into some Japanese I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it, and I'm going to tell you. You're going to find what you had? Yeah, I got a picture of it. Hold on. I'll find it. Okay. Very well. Uh, you <laughs> can watch the show live on YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Um, So we were uh, we were talking about um, Bo Nix and his comment. Can you play that again for the, for, the, for the people in the back or maybe somebody who missed it? Just talking about the difference between – the level of uh, intensity of football in the South compared with the Pacific Northwest? In a sense, the hostility and the maybe the unhealthy pressure that is added to, you know, 18 to 22 year olds by, you know, outside um, noise and fans, like it's almost like a, a unhealthy obsession in the South. I mean, I, I, I was that way growing up. I thought it was, you know, life or death football. And you move out here and, you know, you play the game as hard as you can and, and you got great passion for the game. And, you know, it's just a little bit more, laid back in a, in a way and it's it's a lot more like you know we're proud of the person the the person you are out there on the field and like if you give a great effort and if you try really hard and it, and you know obviously we're out there to win no nobody goes out there to lose and look bad um in front of a bunch of people but i think that's the difference um quite frankly is the what is put into college football in the south and then you know how out here football is just the game and you know we we find the joy in it I mean, that's all well and good. Cool, man. But I'm telling you, NFL executives and general managers, they don't want they want they want cold blooded killers. Mm-hmm. Babs, you wanted to make a point? Yeah, so I was kind of torn on my reaction to that with Bo Nix because my initial reaction is he's soft. 
And <laughs> that's a terrible, you know, like dumb to say that when you're leading into the draft mm -hmm. because what NFL teams want are people and players who live, breathe, die football. And he's just, his comment shows that he kind of liked it when he didn't have to live, breathe, die football. But then the yeah. torn part of me. Real quick before the torn part. It also explains why his numbers were so dramatically different at home when he played in the SEC and on the road. Dramatically right. different. Well, and, and I also think it's kind of telling that pressure gets to him, mm -hmm. talk gets to him, um, that, you know, the big stage might a little bit has gotten to him or, and especially being a quarterback at Auburn. Look, I get it. You, you know, anywhere in the SEC, that quarterback position. I mean, I remember at Auburn when Jason Campbell was garbage. You remember Jason Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember him being at a bar one night and him come trying to come into the bar and, you know, drunk, crappy kids giving him a hard time because mm. he was not good his freshman year. He's basically <laughs> not good for year. like his first two or three seasons. Right. Yeah. I think it was the first the two or three. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't until 04 that he took that turn and then yeah. became right. a the quarterback. Yeah. Made it to the NFL Four and all of that. But like, I mean, he would be getting too. booed out of bars. So I understand where Bo Nix is coming from and where he struggled with it from that standpoint. But then the torn part of me is, okay, Yes, that's a terrible thing to say right before the draft because you're basically saying you don't want to live, breathe, dive football, and, and that's what you have to do to succeed at the next level. But then part of me, too, is I appreciate his honesty, and I appreciate him, you know, saying and admitting, hey, I played better when it when I didn't feel that. You know what I mean? So, you know, in, in the media, we always criticize these athletes for not talking and not saying things and not being themselves and not showing their personality and not letting us in and getting to know them. And, and you know, it's always a, a criticism of some of these top level athletes or even college athletes. And then somebody like Bo Nix is pretty honest and comes out and, and talks about how hard, basically, it was, mm -hmm. if you read between the lines, how hard it was for him at Auburn for him to handle it. And I think he's probably better for it, you know, now moving forward. But so that's where I'm torn. I'm like, and now we're going to just massacre the kid for being honest about I love the honesty. how I just he felt. I just don't think it was smart. I mean, he's in a job interview. It should It should have been... And you I wish he would have worded it differently. Yeah. I, I, like I said earlier, I appreciate the honesty. And I think it's an interesting take for sure. But you want a cutthroat world? NFL. You know what, though? I, I'm glad he did it. Like, I, I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even getting on him for, um, for coming out and saying that. That's who he is. And that's great. I'm glad he's showing the difference in what it is down here compared to what it is out there. That's why I'm like, hell yeah. Like, man, you're, you're here for all of like, that. What? You know, what? Yeah, we don't need you down here, boss. This ain't for you. Like, man, listen, man. And we maybe the NFL isn't either. Babsy, I gave a whole breakdown what I got to do before the tailgate just to get to the tailgate. That's before the game even start. I got to get the Waffle House to soak my tummy, my tummy up. So I can put all this stuff that I'm going to put on this liquid energy that I'm going to put on there. I got to have this. This is as a fan. Yeah. What you think I got to do for as a game? What you think I'm telling my teammates in the locker room? Boy, you better hurt. Hey, man, get this man a bus ticket up out of here. <laughs> we got some games to win. <laughs> what? what? Hey, oh, you guys different down here. I love, boy, I could, whoa, salute to Bo Nix. Hi, right, man, I ain't crucifying him at all. I love that you showing the difference, and whoever you raise up, they should know the difference, too. It's different down here. When you walk out of there, you're going to hear the jills and the chills. Which one you going to accept? Because I'm going to the podium, and I'm calling out whoever it is. Ask Brad Shepard when he wrote his little article. Man, he hit a wall, this, that, and the Man, let me go out here and drop his dub, and I'm going to the press conference, and I'm addressing him immediately. I want that. And everybody on my team better want that. And when you come on your recruiting visit, I'm going to let you know you need to have that. Because if you don't, don't you dare walk in here. And I'm going to be, I remember getting hot at the coaches. Hey, man, who y'all recruiting? 
Hell is y'all doing? What y'all doing? This is not what we built on. No. Dogs. <laughs> I'm looking for. Let me ask dogs. you this. Dogs. Does his comments about how it's different and all that uh, tie in your thoughts at all about Caleb Williams? Let's talk about that later. Greg Cosell coming up next. 3HL, oh. 104.5 The Zone. Mm-hmm. Good one, Babs. Did you know that about 80% of new home buyers don't even shop around for the best mortgage loan and the best rate? That is a huge mistake, especially right now when uh, you need to do everything you can to get the best rate out there. I want to introduce you to Loan Pronto because it was started by a guy who said there needed to be an easier, a better way where you're not buried in paperwork, more of a quicker, simpler process. And the best part, the ability to get the consumer, you, the lowest rate. That's exactly what Roger Moore, the owner and founder of Loan Pronto, did when he started his business. All electronic, all digital, no extra fees hidden. And right now, uh, let's say you, I don't know, have some debt and want some help in getting out of that debt. Well, you can call Loan Pronto and get use the equity in your home and get cash out and they can make it happen very quickly too. So Loan Pronto can do a whole lot for you, uh, not just find you the best rate. Go to LoanPronto.com to start the whole process or give them a call at 615-499-5780. That's LoanPronto.com at 615-499-5780. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Go up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle. Whether you're looking for a car, truck, SUV, or Jeep, new or pre-owned, these are your guys. Best vehicle buying experience you will ever have in just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. 24 west toward Clarksville. Exit 35 is about nine miles outside the city, and it's a beautiful drive into the best vehicle buying experience you've ever had. 3450 Tom Austin Highway in Springfield, Tennessee, just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. Go tell them what you're looking for. Maybe something with less of a payment. Maybe something a little more gas-friendly. Maybe you need something bigger. I don't know uh, what your situation is, but go let them know. Daniel Gupton and his crew will be ready to help you out. You take your test drive, you go inside, they help make the numbers work, and it will be that easy. Check them out online, guptonmotors.com. All the dealership information is there, so it makes it easy to figure out the address and the phone number and all those things. Guptonmotors.com is the website. The entire inventory is there as well. 3450 Tom Austin Highway, Springfield, Tennessee, just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. That's Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.
Three HL one zero four five. The Zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. NFL Draft coming up at the end of the month. Rolling through some uh, position film with Greg Cosell each Thursday. Greg, what's up? How are you? What's up, guys? How's it going? Doing all right, man. Uh, know you're a big basketball guy. Who do you like in this uh, Final Four on the front end? Well, geez. Uh... Well, all I want to see is I want to I, I I'd like to see Connecticut play Purdue, yeah. So that Edie has a guy who's you know seven two playing him instead of a, mm-hmm. a guy who's you know six six seven. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. That's all I'd like to see. That'd be a great matchup yeah. to break down <laughs> yeah. for sure. All right, uh, let's do edge rushers um, today. And so it, it's funny we were talking about this yesterday in terms of what we do. Much different than what you do, <laughs> but that's why <laughs> what do have, you do? What is it that you do? Uh, we we try to have as much fun as possible. <laughs> um, well, I, I try to do that too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so then we have serious people on uh, that do serious things. Um, but it's funny, like from our perspective, to listen to fans kind of uh, in in the pre draft process go from one guy to the next, and like it's almost like a like a wave uh basically so a lot of Tennessee Titans fans are now on to Dallas Turner uh, with pick number seven what do you think about his game what did you see from the film from him at Alabama um I mean Dallas Turner cer- certainly a traits heavy player I mean he's um you know he has what you're looking for he has size length af- athleticism he's got an explosive profile he can bend. Um, he's long. He has great arm length, which is a big factor these days for both offensive linemen and pass rushers. Um, I didn't think he played as well this past year as he did the year prior, but the traits are still the traits. Um, I think he needs some cultivation and development. I think he needs uh, more in his his toolbox, so to uh, so to speak, as far as rushing the quarterback. Um, so, I think what would likely happen with Turner is he'd probably be a a sub package player to start his career as mm-hmm. opposed to a starter um and playing every snap but I could be wrong that would depend on the team um you, you know it's, I don't get caught up in whether he's worth the seventh pick or not I don't know what their draft board looks like so that that's a wasted conversation um but um you know I think that he can become a really good player he certainly has the traits to be that well, okay, so let's uh, let's from a Titan perspective. hypothetical yeah. from a Titans perspective with Arden Key with Big Jeff as far as his fit. Um, also Harold well, Landry in the middle. He's still have Harold yeah. Landry. He's going to play on the outside somewhere along the line. Yep. Um, Arden Key can certainly play inside, and Nico Autry is gone. Um, so the question is, what is their base defense going to look like? Because they have a new coordinator. So, you know, who and and I, I just had a brain freeze. Who's the new coordinator on defense? Uh, Denard Wilson. Denard Wilson, yeah. Right, right Denard that's... Wilson. Yeah. Okay, right. I, and, and I actually got uh, – I just had a brain freeze because I, I, I sat in on a meeting with Denard Wilson when he was with the Jets, when he was the DB's coach. Um, now, what we – I don't – they they probably haven't discussed this. Denard Wilson, obviously being with the Eagles, and he wasn't last year, but he was. They did a lot of five man fronts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's what he believes in, if that's the way he wants to play, or if he's going to be more of a a four man D line front. Um, if he's a five man front guy, then there's no question Dallas Turner is an edge player opposite Harold Landry. And if they were to draft him, he'd likely get the first opportunity to start opposite Landry because the, uh, you know, everybody says three, four, it's really a five, two as your base. It's five f- first level defenders. And the two on the edge normally are standing up in a two-point stance, not in a three-point stance. So it's essentially a five-man defensive front. And if you're in your base defense, meaning four defensive backs and two linebackers, it's essentially a five-two defensive front. Really interesting. Greg Cosell with us from uh, NFL Films and NFL Matchup and uh, Best Film Evaluator out there. Uh, What about Jared Verse, Florida State, Greg? Now, to me, Jared Verse is a 4-3 defensive end. Okay. Um, and in fact, when I watched his tape, and, and this, these are the things I try to look at very carefully, I try to see how a guy plays his best. And when I watched Jared Verse, 
I thought that he was absolutely at his best in a three-point stance. Mm -hmm. I thought he had a false step in his two-point stance. Now, can that be cleaned up? Absolutely. It can be. But he looked far more comfortable to me with his hand on the ground. Uh, And his game is really built on strength and power through his body. He's got what we call short stroke power in confined compact space. I don't see him as a stand-up outside linebacker who at times would have to drop into coverage. I don't think that's the kind of player he is. Now, again, I'm not saying he couldn't do it. I'm certainly not at his pro day. I'm certainly not working him out individually. Um, I just thought watching his tape that he was absolutely at his best with his hand in the ground in a three-point stance where he got off the ball with no false steps, no wasted motion, showed exceptional first-step explosiveness. He's a devastating speed-to-power pass rusher. That is his game. Oh. Greg Hussell with us on 3HL. Chris Braswell um, playing opposite of Dallas Turner. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, Chris Bradwell, Braswell is – more like Jared Verse in terms mm. stylistically, Slay. Right. Again, I don't want people to think I'm making an apples to apples comparison. Right. I'm talking stylistically. Braswell's game, like Verse's, is built on power more than higher level athleticism. And you really see that with clarity when you see his pass rush approach. He's a straight line linear guy. Uh, as opposed to being loose and flexible. He's a speed to power rusher. He's got a really good, what we call a one-arm stab. You probably can visualize that when these rushers just jab and strike with one arm and try to get sort of just inside the shoulder blade of the offensive tackle because no one sort of responds with their hands in that spot. It's kind of an odd place to put your hands. So that's why uh, pass rushers look to get their one hand and stab there. Um, He's not a motorcycle, motorcycle lean guy by any stretch. Um, You know, he's got really good speed to power conversion. Um, I, I kind of liked him the more I watched him and the player he kind of reminded me of. And, and I was speaking when this player came out and this player turned out to be a really good pass rusher as his career developed. He didn't come out as a great pass rusher. The player he kind of reminded me of uh, was Matt Judon who uh, came out of Grand Valley State as a fifth-round pick of the Ravens. And um, Judon was a little bigger, and obviously he's turned into a really good pass rusher. Uh, Darius Robinson is interesting. 6'5", 285. Uh, Slay, you love him, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Um, But, I mean, he kind of transitioned, right, from – interior to the edge and in all of that what what does his game look like right now what what does he bring he's kind of an old school strong side defensive end i mean if the, if the game was 20 years ago he'd be <laughs> the defensive end that lined up on the tight end side um he's another guy he's he's a big man yeah. um he's got outstanding length and mass throughout his body um, and his game reflects those attributes. He's got really strong, heavy hands, great arm extension to lock out. Those are two things that are major parts of his arsenal. Um, his strength, power generation, and confined space is really good. Uh, he's not explosive in the sense of, you know, twitchy, or he's not a loose-hipped guy. Um so you probably say he's even a little stiff and tight, but he's also 285 pounds. Um, so, you know, he's not a stand-up player like Landry or Dallas Turner. He is a hand-in-the-ground guy. Um, you know, in some ways, I, I almost thought of him similarly to Danico Autry. Um, mm. That, that to me, is kind of a an NFL comparison. Um, that, that, to me, is what Robinson is, that he would line up at D end in your base, and he'd move inside in your sub and rush from inside. That's exactly what uh, Blaine and Mickey, the show before us, said about him, um, mm. that they reminded, he reminded them of uh, Danico Autry. That's an er- interesting comparison. What about Chop Robinson from Penn State? Uh, had a great combine, ran the four four eight there, and got everybody kind of buzzing about him. Did you watch his film? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what um, did you see there? He's a freak in terms of just his ability to bend. Um, but um, – he doesn't play the run very well at this point in his career. Um, he needs to develop a much wider array of moves and counters. Um, but in terms of just being able to bend the edge, there's no one in this draft class that can bend the edge like Chop Robinson. The difference, of course, in the NFL is you can't just run around offensive tackles all the time. But he did that at times in college. 
He was someone whose tape you had to watch for true context because the numbers weren't there. Okay. Um, so people are going to say, oh, he only had four and a half sacks. He's not very good. And by the way, there are some personnel people who believe that too. Um, you have to be careful about that. I mean, think about this. Daniil Hunter, who has almost 100 sacks in his NFL career and just signed, uh, who did Daniil Hunter sign with? Houston. Um, he has almost 100 sacks in his NFL career. He had four and a half sacks in three years at LSU. So you have to be careful. You have to watch a guy play full games and and have a context for how, how he plays and what he does. When I watched him against Ohio State, I think three of the first six dropbacks, he just killed the right tackle for Ohio State just by beating him off the edge with incredible lean and the ball just came out like just before he got there. So he hit the quarterback three times with unbelievable rush, but he didn't get a stat. What, yeah, and, and Coach Mack uh, kind of throws that out there ever so often. Like uh, the sack number is a little misleading uh, because coaches look at the, the film and, and guys can impact the game and impact throws without necessarily sacking the quarterback. Yeah, and I think uh, Robinson is a guy that could be a, a movable chess piece as well. You could stand him up. Um, again, not a direct comparison by any stretch, but is there a Micah Parsons, you know, comp to be made in the way he can be deployed? In other words, you can move him around and you can look for matchups. You can stand him up. You know, you can get him um, off the ball a little bit so you can get him generating velocity and speed. You know, th these are the kinds of things you have to think about with these guys. Greg, what about the guy from UCLA, Lat Latu? Uh the problem with Latu is he's, and I know this from speaking with people, he could well be off 15 or 18 teams boards because of his medical history. Because he had that that neck fusion and he Ooh. they did not clear him at the University of Washington mm -hmm. and it cleared up and then he was able to play at UCLA. I, I really like this kid a lot. He may be my favorite if I had to pick one. Um, he's got size, he's got length, he's got a really... Uh, refined uh, toolbox. His his pass rush traits profile is really high level for a college player. I mean, he's got a lot of tools in his toolbox, and you rarely see that for a college player. Multiple moves in his arsenal. Um, and he can bend. Um, he probably has to get a little stronger, but he's not weak. It's not as if he can use power. Um, you know, he kind of, um, yeah. He's just, I really like his tape a lot. I'll, I'll be really curious, though. You know, there might be teams, like I said, that, that don't even have him on their board because of the medicals. Um, Greg, what about what about the um the kid, Marshawn, the young man, Marshawn Nealon? No, Michigan. I didn't get to him yet, so okay, I can't speak right. to him. Uh, yeah. Okay, you look, you look, I, when you look at measurements, I, I thought it was impressive. Yeah, he's one guy Robinson. I didn't get to yet. Um, yeah, okay. Right. Is, so, is there a guy that we uh, have failed to mention? That, that you like um i'd have to look at the list because i've i've been watching so many guys yeah i know you <laughs> at, at different positions right that <laughs> Let, let's do this um i wanted to ask you about stefan diggs uh going to the okay. texans um what, what do you see in stefan diggs's game at this point in his career and and how do you see him fitting in with that wide receiver rotation in houston well they have a really good you know group of wide receivers obviously mm -hmm. um uh, he won't be the number one because he's not as good a player as Nico Collins. And Nico Collins is a true boundary X. He's 6'4", 215. He can run. He caught 80 balls last year. Um, I mean, Nico Collins is clearly their number one receiver. Think about what Tank Dell was before he got injured. He had a great chemistry with C.J. Stroud. I can't see that changing. Um, Diggs, at this point in his career, could end up being their sort of slot movement guy who sort of works the chains, keeps you on schedule. Um, he's not the vertical dimension that he once was. Um, so he could end up being a big-time number three for them, um, you know, with the ability to be a little more, obviously, but he's not going to be their number one by any stretch. Yeah, so I wonder how that works itself out because, like, uh, I mean, like we all know, like that position tends to lend to a, more of a diva personality type. So, well, I mean, but he, he knows well, what he's here's getting what we into, know. You know, here's what we know: the, the four of us are not in the Buffalo Bills facility. Yeah, but mm. here's what we know: they just took a thirty-one million dollar cap hit. They couldn't wait to get him out of the building. So, you know, and by the way, they got nothing point. in return for this year. That's right. They get a second round pick next year. So they just traded 
a receiver that's caught over 100 balls for three or four years for them, yep. and they got nothing in return for this year. So, I mean, I think people can figure that out. Going to be an issue, especially if he's not the number one or number two. Yeah, and I, and I, I don't know that, but he won't be the number one. Right. You know, other than that, then it depends on how you put your offense together, what Bobby Slowick decides to do, but he's not going to be the number one. Nico Collins is just a younger, better, faster. Nico Collins is just a better player. Can I ask you about a random quarterback that uh, Don just reminded me of during the break? Um, what? And you might not have, you might not have watched it, tape. I don't know. Is it someone I, I probably haven't seen? I don't know. <laughs> no, no I, Spencer, I think Spencer Rattler him, yeah. at South Carolina. Oh, no, I've seen Spencer Rattler. Okay, well, what do you think about him? I don't know what to think about him. I feel like nobody's talking about him right now, Cosell. Spencer and, Rattler, um, as uh, did you uh, do a game with him at all, Don? I did. Yes, I did uh, early though this year, but the entire staff at South Carolina was like, we've got scouts calling all the time about him. Like there's a ton of interest in him. Now that was early yeah. in the season, but. Well, I, I, I know the offensive coordinator there, Daryl Loggin. So mm. um, he's the uh, best. He used to be here. Yep. Yep. That's right. You guys know him too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rattler came out of Arizona um, as the most highly recruited quarterback in the country and went to Oklahoma where he had a great freshman year. Then got off to a slow start, and you know the pressure there. And they they had Williams, Caleb Williams, so he got benched. So he got so he transferred. Um, he is a really gifted thrower of the football, Spencer Rattler. Mm -hmm. um, that's a given. This kid's really gifted. Um, he's going to be a little bit polarizing uh, because there's he's really gifted throwing it. Um, he effort, effortlessly makes every throw you want to make. Um, he showed the kinds of traits when you watch him that that transition well, subtle pocket movement to avoid pressure, work through progressions. Obviously, with Dowell Loggins there, there's NFL progressions. Um, he played behind an offensive line that was had to be among the worst in, in the Power Five this year. So he started to flinch a lot, which, you know, you hate to see that because when quarterbacks start flinching, that's a tough thing to fix. You just hope that's not baked into the way he plays now. Um but, um, you know, I, I would say that he's not a pure timing guy. He's a little bit because he has such a good arm and he probably could make, you know, felt like he could make every throw. There's a little bit of see it, throw it as opposed to great timing. Mm -hmm. It's not terrible, but there's a little bit of that. But he's really gifted. Um, somebody's going to draft him on day two. And more than likely, someone will draft him and he won't have to play this year. Yeah. which would probably be the best thing for him. But he's one of those guys that it would not surprise me if over time he developed into an NFL starter. Interesting. Love yeah, it. it was hard for me to get a take on him because that offensive line was so bad. So bad. Were, they so were, bad. like, really bad week two, too. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, then, uh... it was really, really. I mean, it's a shame when you see that yeah. because, you know, quarterbacks, contrary to, you know, we all talk about quarterbacks, they're still humans. And what happens is if if you're under duress all the time, you start to anticipate it and you perceive it even when it's not there. And that it's really almost impossible to play quarterback when that's the way you, you're feeling. Ryan Sl Tannehill. Yeah. Slay and I have, saw it. have a vivid uh, memory of him uh, yes. putting up some numbers against Tennessee one year. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, watch that tape. He'll be first pick overall. Yeah, no, no. Brown can throw it now. I mean, he's... He's as maybe as good a thrower as there is in this class. Interesting. All right. Hey, thanks, Greg. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, Cosell. All right, guys. Thanks. There Appreciate he is, it. At Greg Cosell on Twitter. Must follow there. When we come back, uh, more of your phone calls. Dan and Franklin has been very patient. We appreciate that. Dan, we'll go to you first. Matthew, talking about Vols in the portal. Portal's getting crazy out there, y'all. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. 3HL 1045 The Zone. What up, good people? What's happening with you? Uh, holistic stem cell therapy will help you if you get a little aches and pains and a little inflammation is in the body, wherever it is in the body. It doesn't just have to be a particular spot. Wherever it is, they're going to directly hit it. And a holistic stem cell therapy is going to be right there for you and going to alleviate all the pain that you're having. Me, I've done it. That's right. Take my word for it. Trust and believe. Your body, your cells, your solution can heal you. Why continue to pop? 
things that are going to attack your your liver and things of that nature, like over-the-counter drugs, when you can let your own body do the healing for yourself. That's right. They go and then store them for future and continued use. Your body stem cells are your own bodies. You understand that? It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Congestive heart failure, lung issues, autism to arthritis, all can be cured if you just call and get your consultation today, 615-850-4415, 850-4415, KellumStemCellInstitute.com.
Three HL one zero four five the zone. Rangers and Devils involved in a 10-player fight. Eight people ejected. It happened right when they dropped the puck. That's how you get to it. I know. Like, they don't even plan around. You know even, something like, happened in pregame. Yeah, yeah, obviously something happened in pregame. And they were just like, hey, when that puck drops, it's on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or it could have been something from a last time they played and they remembered it and brought it up in pregame. Yep. That's definitely possible. As well. 615-737-1045, Thursday edition of 3HL. Appreciate you being with us. Dan and Franklin next up. Hey, Dan, what's up, man? Um, I got it. Yo, Dan. <laughs> hey, Dan. <laughs> You're up. Hang on. <laughs> Let's make sure he's... <laughs> is he in the drive-thru? Make, make sure he's... Make, make sure I mean, he, he just everything. said, I got it. It sounded like he was talking to his wife. Like, I'm going to pay for this meal. Matthew in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Matthew, what's up? Hey, guys, I'll make it quick here. You know, Ron, what a heck of a season for Tennessee basketball. I mean, the quick question I have here, you know, it's no secret with Freddie Dillion going into the portal and where the transfer portal sits at. Do you see Coach Barnes? I know it's easy to say you want to leverage both recruiting high school kids and taking kids in the portal, but where Coach Barnes sits at in his tenure, where where this team is headed when you bring guys back like Sakai Ziegler and Jonas Adu. Do you see Coach Barnes really attacking the portal more these next two seasons as opposed as to bringing in a a freshman? And I'll hang up and listen. That's a great question. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, I think it's going to be by position and situation. Um, You look at it, I think you you got some spots filled in the front court for the future. You always got to try to restock. Um, I think the wing would be something that you got to attack from the portal because you need that experience outside of what you're going to get from Cameron Carr coming off the bench, but um, the point guard is kind of solidified. You want to have somebody to back that up as well, especially with DeLeon jumping into the um, portal. And I would prefer for that to be a freshman. You know what I'm saying? Try to go get another guy like Freddie to be able to take that spot once the guy walks away from the game. Because you're not going to get a transfer portal guy at point guard. Not, 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 not with the guy playing 40 minutes not a game. That. Unless you can find a combo guy that can kind of play yes. off. like game They can play with in. him. Yeah, they can play with him. Asante mm-hmm. would be a – a mold of like that, you know what I'm saying? So kind of what they got with Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada what Alabama picked up. Uh, that'll be the only way I see that. Um, but it would have to be a wing guy. But I, me personally, I would go get a freshman point guard to kind of learn and be mm-hmm. able to walk back into that situation after. Great question, dude. You like Carr also. I love Carr. Love Carr. Pro dude. potential there. Yeah, him, May, Shaq, Ganey, I think it's, it's, it's a good spot. And one more guy out the portal. I think and a freshman backup point, I think is a good spot. Need another like kind of stretch wing guy, like kind of connect that can shoot the three, but go down low too. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, gonna be is tough that guy out there? <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Um, but it's funny when when they <laughs> took to connect, you were like, "Hey man," because you went up there and watched them run, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you were like, "Hey man, this guy from North North Colorado." Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I heard it before, Slade. <laughs> You're yeah. like, no, no, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. can score. He and, can shoot the basketball. And that's the thing, though. We had heard it before. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I know. Uh, Ty, well, I, I can't even remember the name. Um, started with a T, Ty. And then couldn't, couldn't shoot it. Yeah, and, couldn't shoot it, it, but yeah. Chaz Lanier, um, local kid that's um, in the portal from North Florida. If he doesn't go to the league, I think that's a guy you, you kind of try to attack. Local guy, played at Innsworth, had a great year, 50-40-90 guy, 50% from two. 40 from three, 90% from the free throw line. Had a really good year in North Florida. He'll be a good guy to get 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six wing. That can athletic. I, I saw someone ask uh, Rick Barnes recently, like, did you know what you had in Connect? And it was like, not this. Not, not that. Not, yeah. <laughs> like, maybe the second best player in college basketball? I tell you what, though, when you looked at them, when you looked at that scrimmage, with the vets out there and the vets not giving up nothing and him having his way, he was like, if this right here can translate, to the game, you got some. You got some. That's the good thing about guys being able to come in and you recruit and open up and open gym. Like you can kind of tell what what's gonna be what. So six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Tommy in Nashville. Tommy, what up? Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, as far as Spencer Rattler, I don't know if you have ever seen this, but there was a Netflix series on the top three quarterbacks in the country when he was in high school and. Uh, you might want to go back and look at that, and you'll find out kind of what type of personality Spencer Rattler's got. Uh, and people do change. I'm not saying he didn't change, but was it a little cocky? Was it a cocky attitude? Like, well, he 
was treated as a god. Yeah, I heard I that. Mean, I heard and that. he had something happened in high school. It was real hush hush, but his uh I think his senior year, he had the, the last couple games of the season, he was kinda off the team and uh uh but he's an unbelievable talent as far as throwing the football. Mm. And uh Slay, I I think this is kinda ironic. I wanted to see what you thought about it, but Burns from North Carolina State, he was at Tennessee, right? Yep. I don't think he would have ever played at Tennessee because he takes, because of his size, the couple games I saw him play, he takes plays off on defense. And you don't take plays off on defense at Tennessee. Yeah. So I wondered what you thought about that. Yeah, um, appreciate your call, man. I I thought, uh, quickly, I thought that, DJ Burns was going to be in the mold of someone else um, coming into Tennessee. He had lost a whole lot of weight. Yeah, um, he wasn't this big. No, nah, he, nah, he was getting That's one thing you're going to be before you even get on the floor. You're going to be in shape. I think that kind of what pushed him out. He didn't want to do it that way. So he went to Winthrop, um, gained all the weight back, probably 40 pounds, and then the next year, 50 pounds, and then the year after that, got up to where he is now, comfortable with where he is. But that's what I was saying in the matchup against him and Edie we talked about yesterday. Edie is in shape. That man is in great condition. Like, so it's a lot of times that when the ball's coming down, like he said. They got to wait on him. No, they ain't even got to wait. They, DJ Burns lets them play, and he trots up to half court. If they pull it back out, then they reverse it to him, and then he go down to the post. But they can go four on four, and it's cool with him. He ain't going past <laughs> half court. You can't do that with Edie. Edie will run his tongue out. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see if they get up and down the court, man. Sounds like you like Purdue in this matchup. I like Purdue unless – DJ Burns, like what Brandon Haywood said, is allowed to play the way we used to play. When you meet him at the free throw line, it's bang, bang, and it's on. And you, and you jock in for position. Ain't no fouls called. Let the big fellas figure it out. I love it. Five o'clock hour coming up. We'll talk more Titans football, NFL draft coming up. Talk some college basketball. Big savagery. Ramon Foster will join us at 520. All that next. 3HL 1045 this zone. Outdoor lighting. You think, oh, yeah, well, I don't need that. Uh, You probably do. It's amazing the difference it makes in your landscaping and your home. Outdoor lighting perspectives of Nashville is who you need to call to. Family business, over 25 years of experience, the largest professional landscape lighting company in North America, and we have them right here in good old Nashville. Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville. They do customized lighting design for any property or landscape. The lighting consultant will come out uh, and even do a night demonstration for you if maybe you're wondering what it will look like. Uh, That's what we did with my backyard and my driveway area and you would be amazed at the difference it makes. I absolutely love it. They can do everything. They've got wireless app-based control options, uh, the most advanced LED technology out there. They light up your night with festival lights, path lights, wall washing, tree lighting, area lighting, and they can even do maintenance on lighting systems that they did not install not to mention commercial lighting and holiday lighting on top of it, too. Uh, If you are thinking about it, now's a great time to do it. They're actually donating some proceeds to the Rally Foundation, raising money for childhood cancer research. If you go ahead and get that done and get a uh, consultation and see how they can beautify and enhance your home and landscape right now, all you have to do is go online to reach out to Bob and everybody over there. Outdoorlights.com slash Nashville. Outdoor Lighting Perspective of Nashville.
Good evening from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hong. The Titans will not have to deal with Stephon Diggs for multiple years because the Texans have just redone his contract. He passed the physical earlier today, making the trade official. And the Texans wiped out the final three years of his deal, meaning he will be a free agent after the 2024 season. They also moved around some guaranteed money, meaning that he will get $22.52 million guaranteed as a part of the 2024 season. Tonight, the Preds at home. They only have three more home games in the regular season as they host the Blues. Preds currently the number one wild card seed in the Western Conference, but they only hold a six point lead over the Blues. Tonight's puck drop is at seven and make sure that if you want to watch it, you can only do so on Hulu and ESPN plus for all your foundation repair waterproofing needs. You need to visit USSTN.com breaking news at once on your home for the Vols. The flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home to three HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three H L one zero four five the zone Thursday edition. Brent Doherty with you on a beautifully cloudy and cold day in the Music City. Hope you're having a great day. Weekend is almost here. Don Davenport is certainly here. What about? Almost there. It's going to be a fun weekend with the women's and men's Final Four uh, action, and uh, the women getting unprecedented um, people watching and interest and ratings and all of those things. And uh, got some great matchups coming up. That UConn Iowa matchup, man, that's going to be something. Mm. Yes, it is. Two stars, one a mode of each other. Caitlin Clark and Paige Buckets. Mm-hmm. Ron Slay is here. Hey, I'm in the building. I'm in, I'm in the, the building. building. Best believe I'm in the building. Better be ready. I'm in the building. building. Carl ain't got no rules. Time for the show. You got the Sweet 16 shirt on? I'm ready. Is, is Detroit out of you now? Almost. Like, are you back? A little bit. <laughs> A little bit. The rest is coming. I done had some wild dreams. <laughs> I have. Like really? The one, yeah, the one last night was, um, it was... The final four matchup of UConn and Iowa, and it was just Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark playing on the court. And then in the middle of the game, it would switch. Like, they would be running down the court, then all of a sudden South Carolina would appear, and they would be playing nobody. And it just kept going back and forth. Then I'd wake up and be like, man, this is crazy. Then go back to sleep, and the game would pick right back up. So it was weird. but That is weird. Yeah, so that's Did you I wake am. up to make a bet on it? You know what? I would have if I could have saw the score. It was just them playing against <laughs> each other. I couldn't figure out who was winning or anything. And then South Carolina wasn't playing nobody. So maybe they're saying that South Carolina going to beat NC State and Paige Bad. Beckers and Caitlin Clark going to duel to see who goes to play South Carolina. I mean, I, I think that's right, right? Yeah. I, I mean, they're 11 and a half point favorite. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. And also, shocker that Slay would dream about basketball. I know. Right. I turned the TV off immediately because I think it was projecting into me. Oh, you had the TV going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, it's cold out there. I was just out on the Wanai. It is. It's the wind. It's the, it's the wind. It's wind. also cold. Yeah, it is cold. It's like 50, isn't it? Not 50 I mean, I think we've 54, gotten... 54. 54 degrees. We've gotten used to the warmer weather, so yeah, it's 54. Which, 52 now. Man. Like with an hour, the wind, it'll be like yeah. that. But with the wind, it feels like 51. Yeah, but it dropped That's two right. degrees in one second. So, like, we're going to be Antarctica here in a second. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys see Babsy thought, Babs thought the winter was over? I Wrong. swear, there's a name for this. Like, Blackberry like, Winter or something like that. Everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we talked about this at this time last year. Yes. And really? it's sure. like, this is the last hurrah mm-hmm. of winter. And then yep. it gets warm again. It's, do- yeah. it's warm until... Well, yeah. there's dogwood and, winter, which actually would make sense now because the dogwoods yeah. are out. And there's then there's blackberry winter also. Yeah. What is blackberry winter? All I know is it happened wow. last year right after I planted all Black, of my trees. Or was that two years ago? Right after I planted all my brand two new years. trees in be. the backyard. I don't remember this conversation. I, I cannot have. believe you planted trees. Didn't plant better. Well, they all died. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead. Don single-handedly trying to kill our oxygen. 
That's right. Trees, dogs, everything. Fish. No, the dogs are alive now. And in rehab. I mean, well, in Big therapy. Big boy is rocking yeah. his rehab. Let's rehab just say like he's... had a problem. Oh, not that kind of rehab. <laughs> yeah. That would be for the... The yeah. little mini Aussie, yeah. He probably needs rehab. So dogwood winter is mid to late April, and uh, yep. blackberry winter is early to mid-May. There you go. Ooh. Okay, so what are we? We're dogwood? I think Yeah, we're just dogwood. a little early for okay. dogwood winter, but yeah. I mean, the dogwoods are out, and they're beautiful. Global warming. I'm just glad that your voice is back, Slade. Man, yeah, me too, you're man. back. And I, guess what? I preserve it at night. Like, I don't do no hollering. Like, in our <laughs> house, we do a lot of hollering. I was going to say, do you normally holler yeah, a lot like, at night? Yeah, like, because Ron will be upstairs. I'll be like, you know, I'll holler, Ron! <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So I don't do that. And I can Why feel just the stress right now. Kyle's here. He'll try to ignore it. Like, he ain't got his phone by him. And I know he does. Oh. But that's a good way. So I just holler. And I know he can hear me. I don't care if he got headphones on or anything. So you haven't been hollering? No. Nah. I'm back hollering probably Saturday. <laughs> but also, like, the whole friedness takes your voice. Oh, because it dehydrates you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that part, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you add the friedness to the going at the officials Yeah, for 40 minutes. I, yes. I had some quality quotes, too. I wish somebody would have recorded them. <laughs> you had some quality quotes. Yeah, I was, like, really thinking. Really thinking. <laughs> like, you, you were thinking up singers? Yeah. Like, I was like, um, so when Edie, when he made it through the first half, and they, I think they had With stopped no to shoot free throws. Yeah, I, I hollered out once oh, it yeah, got the quiet. Oh, yeah, the free throw run. Yeah, the free throw run. I hollered out when it got quiet. Like, this is the closest thing we'll ever get to see to Ralph Sampson again. Great job, officials. You're doing a terrific job. Do you think they got that? No, if they didn't, I also relate to them that <laughs> this is the only big man that I know that it can play without fouling, such as a Bill Russell. Rest in peace, Bill Russell. <laughs> They're very well-educated singers. At yeah, I'll tell you, I was thinking about it. <laughs> and they got it. They had to. <laughs> yeah, you worked at Ralph Sampson and Bill Russell. I was saying it to the top of my lungs, too, so I know they heard it. Like, didn't nobody. It's, it was when they gave the ball to the to Zach Eady before the band or the crowd would and start cheering. It would get, it's all quiet. get real quiet. Yeah, and then when they bounced to the you trying to get. Your Bill Russell singing? I was, I was right there. <laughs> right there. But are those zingers, like, maybe too long? No. Because you need, like, short bursts. I, no, but that's why you got to be able to repeat it fast. That's what I got. This is the closest thing we ever seen to Bill Russell. Thanks, Al. This is it. That's a Bill Russell. But that's they, Bill Russell. <laughs> Rest in peace, Bill. <laughs> they could have just thought you were talking about how good you he was. You have to add that <laughs> at the end. Yeah, that's it. Oh, my Bill. Yeah, oh, my boy. <laughs> that's my boy, yeah. Tim James yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. 14. What was it? Yeah, whatever. Oh man, it's a lot. It's amazing, one a whole lot. Yeah, I was on. I was on ten. I, I actually that was my first time not having any control of myself. You had no control. Yeah, like usually I can be like, man, come on, Slay. Like you, uh, like it's kids out here. I was like, now nah, forget all this. Like I'm, you were I'm full here. run. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here for all this. You went but, full Michael Jordan. Screw the kids. Yeah, <laughs> but wait, Will from the Ville was there to like kind of help you. He, no, he was with me. He was yelling things as well. <laughs> I don't even know what he was yelling. I was so loud. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to the two of you, man. That was good. I'm telling Chris Lowe one line. He was like, Slate was, Slate was yelling some things. I gave my all, man. <laughs> you gave your all for Tennessee. I did. They, they should have been proud of me. I really thought you might get thrown out of that Purdue game. I tried. After, the, after that discussion that we had. I actually tried. I, I was lifting up the bike rail and slamming it down. In, next to a security guard. You're talking about the rail that's in front of you yeah, that, keep the that goes from the bleachers to the floor? Yeah, the barricade yeah. right there. I was picking it up. You were lifting up. it up yep. off the ground. Yep. And the police didn't care. And slamming it back down? Yeah, like, la 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 <laughs> This is stupid! What is this stupid? La la! <laughs> and then I guess they, I thought they, I guess they thought they was going to tire me out. Yeah, they were going to tire me out. They, oh, they were going to let you tire yourself out. No, nah, I was taking a timeout when they took a timeout. Oh, you did? When the team took a timeout, I would sit down. <laughs> I, was, I was telling you all, it was a plan. It was executed, too. I'm proud of myself. Good job, It Slay. was executed. <laughs> good job, Slay. Mm-hmm. Except you couldn't control yourself, so mm-hmm. not good job, Slay. No, it was good because I made it. Made it through. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dude. Hey, survive in advance. That's all I did. That's all I did. Did y'all know that Jim Valvano is the one that said that? Yeah, <laughs> my man. Really? Mm-hmm. He what? So that's the reason the 30 for 30 is named that? I don't know. There's a He's 30 a- for 30 named survive in advance. It's about his team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, coined yeah. that phrase in 1983. Yeah, yeah. Yep. The NC State team, yeah. <laughs> You just and then some other NC State player back in like 1930 was the first one to cut down the nets. Mm-hmm. And also, did y'all see Zach Eady standing flat-footed cutting the net down? See, when you start, he didn't even need a ladder. That's when they should have brought the circus that's tent just, out. Yeah, he looks like an alien. Yeah, like come on, man. All right, we know you tall. <laughs> <laughs> what like, do you want him to do? Get yeah, on the ladder. Guys, yeah, yeah. Give Warner some credit. <laughs> Warner, he should have pushed the ladder down. Then he would have showed me something. Cut the lead. Ain't nobody can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I could touch the net at John Trotwood Moore. <laughs> the the NC State after coach after that school. first cut no. down the nets was Everett Case back in 1947. There, there you go. go. NC State just doing it, man. <laughs> it's supposed to be here. They're doing it and doing it and doing it well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny what she laughs I love at? it. I love it. <laughs> Big Savagery, Ramon Foster. Uh, we'll talk some Titans topics with him next. 3HL 104.5 The Zone. <laughs> All right. If you have not checked out Two Rivers Ford lately, they pretty much have something for everyone there. And uh, if you're thinking about a new vehicle, you can come see us. We're going to be live. 3HL will be live out there. I think everybody, right? Every single show will be live out there all day at Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet on Monday. So go ahead and put it in your calendar. Come see us. Uh, You can see my new truck. I just bought from Two Rivers Ford, which, by the way, Mr. Babb stole again today and is driving. That's a different conversation, though. Um, We might have to get him one, I guess. So you want to know why you should shop at Two Rivers Ford? They have something for everybody. um, And they have a mobile experience division. It's amazing. Everything comes to you in 2024, right? Well, Two Rivers Ford comes to you. You need maintenance on your vehicle. They perform basic maintenance, oil changes, new brakes right at your home or office, or you can schedule pickup and delivery. They will come pick up your vehicle, leave you a loaner, service your vehicle, bring it back when it's ready. They do so much, and when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, their team of experts at Two Rivers Ford is the best on every type of vehicle. There is a reason Two Rivers Ford's been around for over four decades. Come see us live out there on Monday in Mount Juliet, Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
Three HL one zero four five the zone. I'm still waiting for the the par slays for the weekend. Oh, it's tomorrow. No, I know. Oh yeah, they'll be there. You be ready? Oh, I'll be good and ready. Yeah. I'll be ready. I'll be. Ready. I mean, I I listened to Todd Furman Bama first half. Yes, they were like plus four and a half, I think, something like that. Yeah, Verzuka. I, that that is that is gonna be a funny it so, game. It, it sounded like he liked Purdue also. Yeah, I mean, I I can't. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! That's right. Whoa. That's right. Uh, That's right. When it's time to give some away, it's listen, time to give it away. What, hey, was it? I, did the, did the cricket get lose again? God, I'm I am talking in Dawn's ear. I'm all the way over to the <laughs> left, and then it just fires. Fire. Yeah, yeah. Fire! 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 It just fires. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> expired expired we have an we have amp an problem, problem. <laughs> um hey by the way i am going to give away a family four pack of tickets to see nashville sc host philadelphia on saturday night thanks to artisan custom closets that? i'll do it at the end of this segment after we talk to savagery you better be ready so um, uh stick around for that real quick before i pull up savagery i needed to here it is. Justin on YouTube. You can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. She's Ron, your fried zingers. Quote, my zingers are as bad as the officiating. End quote. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks. Rest in peace, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Sam, man. Sometimes you got to keep it PG, man. Oh. They just be out there hollering and cussing. Big Savagery, Ramon Foster. Yeah, what's going on? What's going on with you, you Sam? Yeah, we need something. We oh, need okay. you. Okay. Uh, are you busy? Yeah, you might want Paul Savage. Are, uh, are yeah. we, <laughs> he, 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 are we he's interrupting an you? Yeah, he's at, he's, he's at at baseball right game. now. Oh, okay. Yeah. RJ has a baseball game, so. so. <laughs> you, might, you might want to pause that. He might want to let Savage be cool for a minute. <laughs> Protect Savage from Savage. Yeah. You needed that this weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Should yeah. we try again? Let's, let's, uh, uh, Big Savage, yeah, Ramon Foster, are you there? Yeah, we're good. My bad. My hey, bad. hey, there Savage. you are. Up the street. <laughs> By the way, man, hey, I appreciate y'all having me back again, man. It's always a good time with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why we're all laughing at that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all know when I come on here like this, I'm about to act a fool. That's why. That's what that is. So, did you? Hey, bro- Bab- Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, Babsy, by the way, if you can't tell in the morning, I'm taking your Twitch, please. It's, it's become a competition between me and Bert. I just need you to know I give credit where credit is due. The Twitch, please, it's a race in the morning, as Susan said first, okay? Oh, okay. Well, you should yeah. you should win that race. Bert's <laughs> well, a little slow, see, right? He got control over it. <laughs> wow. Is this your jab back? Is this your jab back because of the cricket? Yep. <laughs> you got that. So, uh, Ramon, did, did your brother tell you about his uh, his trash talking, his creativity involved in his trash talking at the Purdue game? Uh, man, he, he didn't give me the full breakdown. That's one thing that has it, not happened. Like, we talk. But he ain't give me the real rawness because right, it's like a back porch conversation. Li- listen to this. H- hit him with the hit him with the Bill Russell slay. <laughs> no, I can't just hit him straight off. No, right? you can't. He's, can't, he's, no, he's no. already done it. You yeah, can't, can't hit it I again. I can't run it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sam's got to be listening, man. Oh, uh, got to play it. I can't listen. I can't go back down the road. <laughs> I can't come up the road. I, I I'm already open now. <laughs> All right. Well, you made it back in one piece. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I got a voice That's again. all I was glad for. And that was the other thing, too, is the voice, man. People were trying to make him take tidy toddies, which is never a problem for him, and just give him all kind of remedies to get his voice back. But he's back now, and I heard it, I heard you earlier say you was going to take it easy, which is a good thing, Savage. Yeah, rest, man. rest some vocals, man. Yeah, man, I got I to gotta, I gotta make it all the way to Monday. Once I get to Monday, it's, it's going to be um, live wire. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm back in the saddle, baby. I'll be robbing you like ready for the spring game. Veteran. Yeah, for the spring game and for the baseball game. At some point. Hey, hey. Mm, hey, there's man. nothing wrong with that, man. I'm here for a good time every time. Okay. All right. So you still you still holding strong with Joe Alt at seven? Uh between it see Mary, there's a lot that's gotta happen. There's a lot that gotta happen. Do I think, okay, and as much as I'm a champion Dallas Turner, if it's between picking between Joe Alt and Dallas Turner, I think I'm gonna take uh Joe Alt, okay. Uh, but if there's a scenario in which Joe Alt isn't there, I'm okay with going defense. Like I told y'all last time, it boils down to me. I'm strengthening this team to a place 
and where they can really compete. And not just compete for one year, but compete for years. And I think that's Joe Alt and I think that's Dallas Turner. I know one of the wide receivers can be, you know, a helpful uh, side to this game, I mean, to this team. But when we're talking about stacking teams that win and win over a long amount of time, it starts in the trenches, right? It does. That's why Houston's able and capable now to make the moves that they're making. Yeah. Like, I, they I, did the I, offensive I, line thing last year. And Mayor, and they did it with Laramie Thompson. And then they oh, went and yeah, got the yeah. kid from, what, at Texas State. Like, we're forgetting that they have been stacking offensive linemen for a very long time. They have an all-pro left tackle. I think their right tackle is Pro Bowl, or either he's getting like $15 million a year also. And then they got a stud center. They got a left guard. I think Shaq Mason is there. Like, so they're making moves, and you're like, oh, we got to play catch-up. No, uh-uh. No, you do not. You start the same way that they did. Be so it's sustainable, especially when you got a guy on a rookie contract. Like, Houston is – I think they're more prime than where – Cleveland was when they acquired Deshaun Watson. You know, like mm-hmm. Cleveland thought they had a shot whenever they got Deshaun Watson, but they still were missing pieces on the defense, and then he gets hurt. If you get your core O line and D line right, you can do whatever the heck you want to for a very long time. And that's why uh, I, I'm saying, you know, as far as the fan base go, on what selections to get, get something that's going to be sustainable for a few years and not just a a one-off to say, hey, we're just keeping up with the Joneses. No, it's bigger than just keeping up with the Joneses when you're trying to, one, keep your job as a front office, and two, change the culture of your team. Like, we talked about that today, too, man, where it was, why is it so different for the Texans to go get Stephon Diggs, and nobody talks about him already being in his his 30s, but also Calvin Ridley being 29, oh, that's a bad deal. Like, come on. And that's because the narrative of this team of sustaining winning has been there. And that's where, to me, it becomes problematic by trying to judge yourself. Houston, Houston's been doing it. They've sucked for a while, and they've gotten a lot of high draft picks. That's why they're capable and able to do that stuff. What was your take on uh, MPF and, and where he is? Because it's – I, I want to get your take on his rookie year where he, he played all of the games. And then last year he got put pushed back because of the suspension, and then it was – and then it was like – cut sooner than he thought it was going to be. So maybe he wasn't ready. And then all these, like, where, where do you put into context where he is as a player? I'm going to be real with y'all. I like him and Dylan Radon. I know a lot of the Titans fans don't want to hear that. You know what backs that up to? I did a podcast yesterday with PFF, with Sam uh, Monson and Steve Palazzolo. And I even had to tell, I was like, man, the thing I didn't like about y'all metric is y'all say people are trash and the public run with that narrative because of what y'all say. And I was like, and if you look at your grades, Offensive linemen don't get good until you're three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And it depends on how they take care of their bodies and stuff like that, on how much longer they can go. I said, but no offensive lineman is really a stud until you're three, four, and five. And they say, Ramon, you're right. Our studies show that it takes time. What sucks about MPF is this. He missed that, hey, what coaches tell you sometimes, whatever you did in your rookie year won't impress me in year two. Well, he got suspended, and then he got immediately hurt. So we didn't get an opportunity yeah. to see what his adjustment was going to look like. That. And I know people look at PFF and say, well, he gave up this amount of sacks. He was a freaking rookie. He was a rookie the same way I feel about uh, Peter Skaronsky. He was a rookie. Every offensive lineman, man, takes a jump from year one to two, two to three, three to four. By year four, uh, if they're still starting and playing, they're more than likely very solid dudes. And, yes, there's going to be some deficiency. Nobody can have – not every team can have – a line like uh, Philly. Did Philly win the Super Bowl this year? No. No, they did not. Kansas City has two of the worst offensive uh, tackles in the league and still won it. One, because they were just serviceable and just got the job done. Sometimes it comes down to that. And I think the need to win for this franchise and for the fan base, man, I think it puts people in a box too soon to where, like, even the players hear some of that chatter or the people that write articles and – you know, give opinions on players, that perception becomes reality if you start to believe it as a player sometimes. And more times than not, when it's only negative, man, just get me out of this city. I saw it happen this past year in Pittsburgh. Kevin Dotson was painted as a bad player. Man, this joker goes to uh, the right team in L.A., and now he's making $17.5 million a year when he was pretty much gold-booted out of Pittsburgh. Yeah. The, okay, so the way this team is being built, um, you got Skaronsky at <laughs> left guard. 
Cushenberry coming in at center, is that the way you, you, you kind of build an offensive line in, in, in your tenure? And is that the way it went down? And who helps who more? Is the tackle standing alone? And you, you work more so with Cushenberry helping Skaronsky, Skaronsky. Because I know in your situation, which Pouncey helped you, you helped um, Big Al Beach in building and Al. Al. Yeah. yeah. So how, how, how is, or is it different each, each, each um, scenario, each situation you're in? To me, and I, I've been sticking by this, and the number is three. Give me three dudes, and then we can work from there. And I think one of those three has to be the center. I'd even, I'd even almost throw the, one of the tackles out if you get me one good center and two good guards because that's essentially, again, what Kansas City has. Even though those dudes yeah. are getting paid buku bucks in Kansas City, their core three are studs, okay? Trey should be a pro bowler by now, legitimately, and will be really soon, and a second contract guy. So I look at that and say it's got to be three. One of them has to be the center, and that's what Cushenberry. Now we got a left guard we think Peter Skaronski will turn into. Who's the next guy? I don't know. It could I – would, I would feel better by saying it would be NPF had he played because I expect him to grow and get better. If they go get Joe Alt, I think it's easy to assume there's a one, two, three with those three guys, and then you figure out what's next on the right side. Uh, Bronsko and Raiden's. I'm, I ain't going to say I'm high on Raiden Savage, okay, because no. I know how some people feel about him. But I believe when it comes down to the offensive line, you can't pay five dudes 20-plus million dollars. Right. One of those dudes has to get by – and be really solid at his job. He ain't got to make a Pro Bowl. He ain't got to make an All-Pro, i.e. myself. Mm-hmm. But ask anybody that's ever played me, did Moan go? Yeah, he did. Okay? I don't even want to speak in third person like that. But what I'm telling you is yeah. this, <laughs> is guys, guys have to understand, and fans do too, not everybody's going to be a Pro Bowl, All-Pro guy. It comes down to finding me a three. I would prefer it to be Savage. The center, number one, give me one of the guards and give me a tackle because that means – the one, one side of your uh, offensive line is really strong, and the other side's got to have a sense of pride to allow themselves to not be the reason why you're losing. That's what it boils down to when it comes down to the five. If you've got three strong dudes, okay, the mm-hmm. other two can't be the reason why. And it just sucks that it's like that, but that's the reality of the league. Right. <laughs> Remote Foster, Big Savage, with us on 3HL. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zach on YouTube says, Burt usually wins. With regard to the uh, Twitch please thing, the Twitch oh. please, that's a, he controls the, the the buttons, Babs. Don't give him a boom on that, okay? You still got to pay him back because of that. Don't do you that, are correct. Babs Z. You are correct. So you're okay. saying that you're you're saying that Bert could like turn your mic off so he could do it first. Yeah, he does that often, okay? And that's my dude, and I love him. I love him to death, but he turns my mic off sometimes just so he can win. But it's okay because, you know, his favorite team is the Baltimore Ravens, and I think yeah. we clean sweep them three years in a row. So it's all good. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> well, That's I right. mean, you can shoot Burt into the sun for that cricket fiasco on April Fool's Day. <laughs> three of them. <laughs> no doubt. I got Burt, man. He's in good hands, man. You we had, all are, You have Babs on top of the table, like standing on the table. Like I Slay, Slay was well, worried about her getting down. She was looking for crickets in the ceiling. <laughs> We had to pay it forward because I had to help Burton get up on that table. So somebody else needed to work just as hard as he did. Oh, so you were a part of it. Uh, oh. see, Bab. Wait, did you hold him up like Simba? Oh, uh-huh. here we go. Like Simba. He, now we got a little listen, more here. Listen, okay. Listen, 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 okay. listen. No, no. He just asked me to pick him up. I didn't know he committed a robbery. I had uh-huh. no idea. Uh-huh. <laughs> pick him up. <laughs> he just asked me to pick him up. I didn't know he committed a crime at that time, Hey, Abby. hey listen. That it, you don't get to do that. That that's not how it works. That's not a legit defense. I didn't know that won't hold up in court. You're now on the list. Just oh, FYI, oh, you're now you on the list. The list. <laughs> well, trying to call Lampley now. I gotta get a good lawyer. <laughs> See, Brad, Brad, where you at, bro? All right, thanks, Savage. Love you, bro. No doubt, man. Love y'all. Y'all keep going. Happy belated birthday, too, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Have fun at baseball. Oh, that's savagery. savagery on the list. How now. about that? Yep, it's there's a get Everybody back list. In.
Everybody. You know, well, they got the, funny... the get back coach. Nope, we got the get back list. The funny thing is he had plenty of time to tell that part of the story and just didn't until he, I think he <laughs> accidentally <laughs> did. I, think, yeah. I don't think he did it on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> it just slipped out. <laughs> but him holding up Bert, that's a whole scene in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of envision dirty dancing. With yes. The water. Or uh, Titanic. <laughs> oh, Bert would love Or this. Titanic. Bert King of this love world. The water falling on him. <laughs> with his hair. Oh, we need geez. to recreate some of these scenes with those two. <laughs> Man, 615-737-1045. Do you have something to do here? Valentin? I do have a giveaway. Give it away, give it away, give it away. Now. All right, clear, Dead giveaway. Clear the lines, honk. Giveaway. All right, here's your phone number. When I say call is when you call it. 615-737-1045. Uh, ticket Thursday on 3HL. Tickets for you to win from Babs Prize Closet. It's open, sponsored by Artisan Custom Closets. Caller number five for a family four-pack of tickets to see Nashville SC host Philadelphia this Saturday night at Geodis Park. Caller number five right now. Go. 615-737-1045. That is thanks to Artisan Custom Closets. You can visit artisancustomcloasets.com today and say goodbye to clutter and hello to calm with when, Artisan. When we come back, uh, Babsy asked Slay what he thought about Caleb Williams coming off that Bo Nix uh, discussion. Um, we'll do that. Also, I've got a little breaking news for you when we come what? back. 3HL, 104.5. This on. We'll be right back. All right, last Preds home game of the season is Saturday, April 13th. You don't want to miss it. It's also Fan Appreciation Night. Uh, the Preds take on Columbus, 7 o'clock at Bridgestone Arena. Uh, go watch the Preds as they continue their march to the playoffs. You can get tickets for that game at NashvillePredators.com slash tickets. As the Preds are pushing towards the playoffs, I want to let you know the best way to score the most savings and access to Stanley Cup playoff tickets once they are in, it's by becoming a season ticket member. So lock in your seats at NashvillePredators.com slash season tickets and go root on our Preds in their last home game on April 13th.
Three H one oh four five the zone, Britt Norton on Davenport Ron Slay. We just recorded the promo for tomorrow. A little bit better than the one that we did for today. We kind of felt like today's was bland. Yeah. Tomorrow's has got a little more hype to it. A little bit more us. That's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. That was a good way to put it. Man, I think I'm a, my folder has run out. I got like four pages left. <sighs> Where you take your notes for the show? Mm-hmm. Yep. Got to get a new one. No one beats zone well, you got coverage. A, you got a bumper sticker in there? No one beats zone coverage. I took this from Where'd Kirby. you get that? Curbs that gave it to me. That's, That's old. so old, mm-hmm. yeah. Been, I'm gonna keep it's a bumper on sticker, it. like full on. You had a real 104.5 The Zone. It's like long. <laughs> not, not like a little sticker. Like, not the one that people stick on their windows and stuff. Now, this really belongs on the bumper. That's a. That's Pull up a to the bumper. Biggin. <laughs> Man. Pull up to the bumper, baby. I'm tired, y'all. You better go to sleep. I went and played 18 at Pebble Beach today. <laughs> <laughs> I did. X Golf Bellevue, you're going to be ta- talking about them tomorrow and giving you a chance to win and go see those guys. They've got like six bays where you can hit into the golf simulator and you can play all kinds of courses like Pebble Beach, St. Andrews, Spyglass, all this stuff. They got and, clubs. You got to take your clubs. Uh, That's you, fun. You, they've got clubs there. Most people bring their own, but yeah, they've got clubs there. And it's funny because they said that a lot of times like guys will come work on their game in the morning and then like they've got a, they've got a really nice bar and they've got bar food, you yeah. know, flatbreads and stuff like that. And so like. People will come have a good time at night, you know, and have some beer or drinks and I'm gonna slide better. And play and play. Uh but the beautiful thing is you don't have to be good at golf, man. Just like try to hit the ball into the target and then go from there. It's it's fun. So we'll be telling you more about that and giving away things. Uh I sh- guess what I shot today. What'd you shoot your I was trying to break a hundred. So I go into <laughs> At Pebble Beach. At Pebble Beach. I, I go into the eighteenth hole at ninety four. Oh. And the the so all I need is a par on the last on the last hole. You know what I shot? What? Shot in the water twice. Ended up with a ten. Uh, he, so my final score, oddly enough, you tried, was one oh four. No, you tried, y'all. Yeah, I shot. The, beats the I shot the. I shot the radio station. I mean, Bo, hey. Bo Nix told you that. Nothing nobody beats, beats a, a nobody beats a trier. That's right. Yeah. What about, Ka- what about Caleb Williams? You wanted to know about that? Yeah. Well, I was just curious, and I know we had this conversation like an hour ago, but Bo Nix's comments talking about how different it is there, basically yeah. out west, as opposed to the south. Like, what did he say? Sometimes they take it too far, too seriously. Too seriously. Yeah, too seriously. Yeah, in the yeah. south or whatever. I- Does that affect your thinking of Caleb Williams? Like, he hasn't, you know, he's hasn't dealt with it here right. or you know just the i mean you shouldn't obviously you can't like tie all of it yeah. together but from a competitive standpoint because there's a lot out there with caleb williams now that <clears throat> you know there was a picture of him at a basketball game with pink nails and lip mm. gloss or something um but where people are looking at him thinking maybe he doesn't take the game as seriously. Yeah, I would, the only pushback I would give them is what I've seen from him, um, him embracing it when he went to Oklahoma. Like, the caller talked about Spencer Rattler coming in and him being the guy. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts. He was supposed to be the next one. And he battled him at Oklahoma, took his job, then went to USC, won the Heisman. And I think the, the competitive spirit that he plays with um, is different. It, it doesn't seem like he's ready to get away from the the game. He just actually drags the outside stuff into the game as far as all his little antics with the nails and things of that nature. I take that all day as long as you're going to come out there and give me your all and you're going to compete. And I feel like he's a he's a competitor, a real-life competitor, and he doesn't get tired of football. I mm-hmm. would, I, Yeah, I think a lot of his emotion that's shown comes from the wins and losses I can deal with that. You know what I'm saying? I, like, that's that's okay. To want to walk away from the game, though, and be like, um, you know, it's, man, what are we going to eat after the game, y'all? Like, we, we, we're straight, man. No, hey, y'all, don't worry about that game, man. It's No, I want it to hurt. You know what I mean? That's different time periods in, throughout the season where you got to take a break and get away from it and then come and reset. But, man, majority of the time, try to get better. You know what I mean? Try to find mm-hmm. different ways to win. Try to uplift people. And I thought I thought he, I saw that with um, Caleb Williams. So I think he would be in a different class. Okay. 
Just my, just my. I was just opinion. curious yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know we're nah, talking across. about the difference. We've been talking about it for two years, aren't you? Mm-hmm. So yeah. So uh, some word around the campfire stuff. <clears throat> Remember we had told you that um, hotels had been asked to uh, submit plans for yes. potential hosting of the Final Four, the College Football Final yep. Four, the NFL um, Combine, the NFL Combine, the NFL. Um, there was another one. Oh, Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. Pro Bowl. Um, so I heard Uh-oh. from a rep, Julia. A little birdie. That um, we are submitting for the uh, 2031 NCAA Final Four. Basketball. Come on, man. 2031. 2031. Come on, baby. One. Come on now. Good Lord, that feels like so far away. Yeah, and it's right around the corner. You blink and it'll be six years. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> 48. Will Levis will be going into year eight or whatever. Right. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be we'll probably have one championship under our belt. You think the, the Titans will have won a Super Bowl by then? Yeah, I like that Titans fans. Yeah, we have a Super Bowl up under our belt, probably trying to you know what I mean, recreate the energy and the mojo and get it back again. So coming up on Monday, we will be. <laughs> I mean, twenty thirty one final four. Hey, they, man. They're gonna submit the Vols and the Titans get a Super Bowl and a championship, all wrapped in one. Look at you. I'm just in here. We'll save that for six years from now. <laughs> Put it in a time capsule? Yeah. Do people still do that? Yeah, they got to. Somebody got to make some money. You just randomly, like, I mean, look, uh, you're turning up all kinds of dirt around here. I'm, I'm sure we've found some time capsules. Yeah, you're supposed to bury them. We need them to on. open some now. We're starting to get that time. We need to start opening them. People have been doing this for like the last 50 or 60 years, putting things in time capsules. There's got to be something that's coming up. One. I don't know if we bury it. I think we just sat on it. We job. used to do it as a class, yeah. Yeah. Like in school. Mm-hmm. Put your little notes in there. Yeah. I think or you could do that. it like a message in a bottle if you were yeah. by the sea. I don't know where it would go, though. What if it ever came back? It probably did. Like two days later. You just all left. Mm. <laughs> Somebody opened it up. By the way, that 2031 uh, Final Four submission thing, yeah. Nashville won of four cities. Down to four cities. Oh, come on, man. Don't put them other little cities to rest. Ain't nothing like a city. <laughs> I agree. You don't yeah, even know what the other cities are. It don't even matter. Think about how different this city's going to be in seven whoever years. Whoever it is, oh them my cities gosh. probably not already had it, whoever the other three, three cities are. I told y'all there's a two-and-a-half-year uh, crane wait waiting list. I'll let you know what we're playing. We ain't playing around. We can't get some work done with cranes. I mean, it looks like the cranes are having baby cranes. I heard there's like they a two-year to wait for a, to get a crane right now. <laughs> What are you laughing at? He, he, just, he just said it. I mean, I, mean, I said two and a half. I didn't say ten, but I said there's a two and a half year wait on crates. I said two. two. Oh, two. two yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. I literally just said that. I mean, like. How did I miss that? Two seconds. I thought you just said baby cranes. I did say I that after, that. yeah. In other words, he says a lot on that. <laughs> so I give you. I give oh, you yes. the, this, is what, this is what you do to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, did I, you laugh? I tuned you out. Yeah, that never happened. Never. <laughs> hey, so is twenty thirty one the next yes. one, the next open one, or is it just a I, later? That's just the one where they made the list of four. I don't, I don't know because okay. remember they were submitting on several different years. I know. I didn't. It was twenty seven. You know, like yeah. thirty one. The... We got WrestleMania soon, though. Re- WrestleMania is yeah. already done. What's that? That's That'll be the right first the event stadium. in the building. Yeah. So we ought to be on the heels of that 28. I want to push the uh, Final Four up. I want to go to WrestleMania. Oh, I'm going. I want to go both nights. Yeah, I'm going now both two-night nights. event. Yeah, I heard that. I'm going to sleep in them. <laughs> Just go sleep in the ring. If, you get a, if, I, if, I, if I'm able to get bed. a suite. No, I'm in a suite. <laughs> oh, sleep. I think you probably can. Yeah. That's how it's going it to That's nice how it's going to be. be. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I'm, yeah. It probably places to hide in there and everything. Remember I talked to him. What's our man name? What's our guy? Um, Burke Nihill. Burke, we talked to Burke, and I asked Burke about the <laughs> boom boom room. How did I get room. that right? Because you, you know me. <laughs> Burke said boom boom room wouldn't be far off. Would be in there. Oh, he did say that. Everybody wouldn't have to know, though. That'd be funny if, like, they you know, clear. he's like, I can't believe I agreed to that. <laughs> you pull it up, huh? They clear <laughs> out. So now I see why he goes on RK Dub. Yeah, yeah he, he did. He did come he up with us. Back. He wasn't he on with back. us. He's like, I am not he talking to Slay again. He's trying to get Burke. Dang, Burke. I can see them like somebody, like they clear out the building and then somebody sees Slay on the security thing. And then they do a sweep of the stadium trying to find him. And he's like huddled up underneath me. the counter somewhere. He can't find me. Yeah. That's a secret entry. He's hiding in there some seat cushions.
<laughs> it's plush. Oh, man. All right, uh, coming up tomorrow, Try Star Friday. Going to be fun. I'm Football, Final Four Friday. I'm wearing Traylon Burks jersey tomorrow. <laughs> oh, are you? Are you back on that? <laughs> you know what? I might, I might wait till Tuesday till basketball's over with. Okay. Go <laughs> What's next, Huck? Uh, that'd be the three HL after party. All right, let's get to it. Love y'all. Appreciate you being with us. Friday coming up. Good night. God bless. See ya. I don't want to be here. Two and a half your way.